All right, <clears throat> so here we have it. So this is the everyday release. Uh, we've got thinlet dies that have, uh, there's alphabets, there's shapes, there's stuff to me that will get us through the first half of the year. And quite honestly, you can use many of these all year long. And then we have some 3D folders. So I'm just gonna take you through the art. I'll show you uh, the packaging because the packaging is actually uh, to scale that I hold. The packaging is not to scale usually uh, on the graphic here. And we'll talk through it. I'll try to watch the chat, answer any questions, but you will also see some inspiration and hopefully that will help uh, even more. Okay, let's see. Am I gonna have this avalanche cascade? We'll see in a second. Okay. <laughs> First thing uh, we'll talk about is, is this alphanumeric skew. And this one is called Bulletin. And what I like about this particular one, I've always wanted to do just a really giant alphabet. I've done a lot of different fonts. I love doing alphabet dies. I think that they have um, a great value when it comes to that, especially how we do that with Sizzix because we try to incorporate as much into a font set as well. But this font has some really cool kind of unique features, not on every letter, but on some of them, like you can see that little angle cut on the S or the C. It may not matter to you, but those little details really matter to me when I'm looking for a font. What I wanted for Bulletin was something really big, really bold. This is a about, it's a two inch font on the outside because this die actually cuts an outline and a solid for each letter. So the die, it's just one die for each letter, but when you run the die through, it will cut the solid and it will cut an outline. So the outline height is two inch. The solid or the bold is about an inch and seven eighths. And what's really great is this is very nice and detailed, cool outline. That means if you cut this out, it will make a great window for, you could even do shakers within this alphabet. That was another thing that if you like to do the shakety shake cards, that you can actually spell out a word and create a shaker behind it because the opening of that alphabet is, is big enough. Also, if you like color, if you like to mix and match color, the solid obviously is bold enough, but I also wanted this to be very thin, as thin as we could possibly go, but also big enough that you could identify a color if you were going to go through the time of, of cutting this out. So this would have been cut twice. It would have been run through once with a color cardstock and then run through again with the white and then you, you can alternate them out. I didn't put the white outline around here, but you get the idea. You can kind of mix and match. And I like this because you can use either one, right? A lot of times when it comes to shadow alphabets, sometimes the shadow is really behind something. So think of this as more of a solid and an outline. It doesn't really have a shadow, right? That is bulletin. Then to kick off, I've really, I've had many people ask about doing some type of birthday set. And, and to me, it was like, it's just been done and it, it's still done and it's out there and there's so many great birthday party type of dies. But when I started looking for art to curate the set, it did take a while. I had kind of a file that had been sitting on my computer for years. And anytime I saw something, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Oh, that's a neat looking cake or that's a neat this. And eventually I had enough ideas that to me warranted a die. And this is a colorized, which means we have all these components to, to add different colors and layers. And this one is called Celebrate. And what I wanna show you really is the scale of this because the packaging, you think, oh, look, there are these tiny little elements. I can make a party on a card. You, you could, but it's gonna be a pretty packed party because these elements are, are much larger. That's the other thing that I wanted to do. I wanted to make sure that if I was going to do something, any of these elements could be standalone on a card. You didn't feel the need that, oh, I need to cut everything out every time I wanna create something. But this could be used for many things. It could be a hat for New Year's. It's streamers, little, little sparkles, this little uh, twisty crepe. So if you look at this, this die is actually just two pieces. The base is going to be that, I'll say that darker teal, and that's the entire piece. Then this top one actually cuts that light blue, but this is all connected. So you don't have to like stick individual pieces down. You could just lay those two layers down. And this piece has that, that crease rule that creates those lines. So it is nice that you can do this for a baby shower or again, New Year's, wedding, birthday. Two great balloons. And again, because it's colorized, we just want to play off of the color. That little highlight is really the base color. So you get two balloons, you have the string. The party hat, you can go as crazy as you want, really. There's many layers to this and you could stop at any point. There's going to be the vertical stripes. If you look behind it, you'll see the two uh, pink. Those are gonna be vertical. You could just have a vertical striped hat. 
if you add the next layer, you can get kind of that spiral, but you don't have to add that layer if you don't want to. Then you have kind of this pom-pom. If you didn't add it onto the hat itself, it could be a sparkler for the 4th of July, again, or New Year's. If you didn't put this on, this could also be kind of a, a megaphone. Maybe somebody would use it as an ice cream cone. I'm not sure. But then there again with the cake, you could decorate the cake however you want. You could do it chocolatey. You could do it uh, a kid's birthday. You could, again, still make a wedding cake taking off the candles because all of these components are going to be separate. And then we have this just real fun, playful gift. And again, the gift could be for anything. If you did this in white and cream and metallic, it could be uh, a wedding gift, again, for a bridal shower or something. So I wanted it more about celebrate, where this could be anniversary, birthday, anything that you want to celebrate, even if it's something just outdoors or 4th of July, you could take just these elements up here and utilize it. That was the thought behind it. So sometimes you'll look at the package and you're like, wow, that's a, that's a lot of birthday madness going on. But honestly, it's really about each component. You might use this for Christmas it, to, to put on, on an envelope for a gift card because it's a really fun, uh, cool package. So hopefully you, you get the understanding and especially when you see the difference in scale. I mean, like the cake is pretty much this bottom half of the packaging. That's important to recognize. And that's why it's also really important to do a live. So you could see it because especially if you don't have a store that you can go in and actually shop, sometimes you're just looking online and you think, oh wow, look at all these little, little things. They're actually quite big. It's cool. It's a great, great party. I love it. Okay, next up, I'm not sure I'm gonna organize this one. That's okay, I'll figure it out. So I always like weird things. That, that's no surprise to any of you. And through my, through my time with Sizzix, I've done weird dyes. We've done uh, scribbles and splats. We've done kind of these little media marks where it's got this great scribble. These are all dyes where it creates all sorts of great markings that you could use on your cards. Because I know people that can journal and doodle and draw, that's great. I can't. But also, I like the idea of being able to cut this out with paper. There's all sorts of different designs that you can either get the positive pieces these stitches look familiar, don't they? Uh, or the negative. Uh, and so through the years, I've just wanted to add shapes. And last year we did abstract faces and some of you understood it. Some of you didn't quite get it. Of course, Pete Hughes in, in the UK just rocked it with his samples. But the elements of this die, if you look beyond the faces, these are really the shapes that are in the die that we did last year, these faces. And there's some great elements to it. Look at all these scribbles the great heart this would be perfect for valentine's day all of these different elements this could be a flower this could be a sun there's all sorts of pieces if you look beyond the packaging and look at the shape and i and i realized that last year when so many people resonated with the shape and i think how pete took the shapes and made it completely different than the packaging and i thought right i want to do this but i know that there's a lot of people that are doing junk journals smaller mini books and so I, I went to Lisa and I'm like, okay, I have this idea. It's a lot of art, but do you think we could pack it all in? She's like, well, we could try. And this is where we started push, pushing boundaries on a lot of uh, different things. These, this die set, I don't know if I could even shake it. They're all different sizes. These are abstract elements and they're all sorts of different pieces. There are 43 dies in here. And if you look, this smallest one is a quarter inch. So it kind of gives you scale. This is about three and a quarter for the stripe, but these are all hand cut elements. Some of them you can use as positives. Some have a positive that already has a negative cutout. Some are just a negative cutout. So for example, this one would cut holes through something, or you could use the positive dots. I just did it just for packaging so you could see. Very, very playful. Again, I saw some samples that uh, Pete did. I don't want to give it away, but I did ask that. I don't have them for live but I asked that Sizzix share them on social media. He rocked this set in a totally different way as only Pete will. But I thought this was a, a great way that you could cut out maybe funky windows. Right? So again, you're doing a junk journal, you want reveals, you could cut some of these shapes. You could stack these pieces. So for example, if you wanted to make an eye, you really could, you could take this shape, stack another shape, then you've got the center for an eye, you've got an outline. There are a lot of different pieces that you can build all sorts of odd elements or abstract elements, if you will. There's some leaf kind of pieces, little rainbow cutouts. This is something that could cut out a negative border or a positive, these tiny little scallops that again, could go on a Valentine or a heart. There's so many cool pieces to this. And sometimes uh, 
hopefully this maybe is a different message than this one was where you're like, okay, I'm not really into the, the face. That's kind of strange. All right. Well, now if you had both of those sets, look at these different scales of pieces or components you can use and build because you can still cut this out and you could add any of these pieces and cut out of this. You could lay this die on here and actually cut dots out of the, out of the heart if you want to, or you could lay these pieces on top and create uh, an element. But I, I also think that people on social media, once, once Pete got that abstract thing, I saw so much inspiration uh, on social of what people did with these parts and pieces, whether they were doing characters or, or anything like that. But it's a great one and definitely a completely different scale than what we did last year. Much, much smaller, uh, just really fun. And I know it would be really cool bigger, but very expensive if we made it any bigger. But there is abstract. It's fun. I agree, Jeanette. It, it is. It's just, it's cool because, yeah, some people are like, oh, come on, I could just go in and cut it out. Yeah, great, scissor hands, go for it. I can't. I need a die to do that because as much as I like to embrace my wonkiness, it, sometimes it just doesn't happen. Okay. Then we've got this one, and this one is very interesting because the inspiration I've seen online has been all the way across the board, which makes me happy because this was ultimately what I wanted to have happen with this die. I've done wood slices through the years. I actually did some wood slices that were Biggs dies back in the day that were steel rule and, and it, it debossed uh, an area. You were able to layer it. I, and I like wood grain. I think wood elements are very cool because they have I don't know, they have a, an evergreen seasonality, meaning you can use them all the time. You can use them for fall, you can use them for winter, you can use them for Christmas, you can use them for spring, if you did florals on them, and you can use them for Valentine's Day. So when we were playing around with the technology of inking the dye, remember last year we did the vintage labels and the tags where you brayer archival over the dye, and then when you cut it, it debosses the color. That is the technology we put in to this one. So this is wood slice, and there's actually two wood slices in there and this alphabet. This is what it's designed to do. These, these are about three by three. This is like three by two and seven eighths if you're picky, but three by three sizes. You're gonna have a solid foundational piece. So you could just cut a jaggedy heart and be done. You can use that framelit die and just cut more of a torn element. You don't always have to build a wood slice. Remember that. Remember, if, if the remix taught you nothing, it was about look at the shape itself. So this is, okay, I've got a cool jaggedy cutout heart. Then when you look at the next layer, see that, that brown? That's another solid die, it's another framelit. You're like, okay, now that's more of a, of a cut heart, but not so jaggedy. So this looks more of like a hand cut heart. Then you get onto the wood grain layer. This wood grain is the only die that you would ink. And when you ink before you die cut it, it will push in those little rings. So if you didn't ink it, it's still gonna deboss them, but you won't have the color. So if you put this in, it will deboss that color and now you have the, the rings of that wood slice. So think about those three pieces together because obviously they build a great wood slice. This could be, uh, if you wanted to do them out of lighter colors, again, for a wedding, you could do beige and cream. That could be almost like birch. So it doesn't have to be dark wood, it could still be light wood. And then we have this very cool alphabet. And again, a shout out to Lisa because when I showed her this font, I'm like, wouldn't it be cool if you could make that into a die? But look at how many rules we have to break by, I mean, it tapers out to such a thin thing. Most of the time when you do a die, it has to be, well, there's spec to follow because you can't have little thin breaks or, or very sharp corners. I'm like, this can't be bubble gum, you know? Uh, not that you should be going out carving into trees, but if you've ever seen that, it, there is really no circular movement. It's all kind of straight lines building that. And she's like, well, let me take a shot at it. And she just, Nailed it. I love this font. Some people think it's kind of like from Stranger Things, if you're a fan of that show. But it does. It has a very cool hand-cut look. It could also be a hand-stitched look. Whereas if you were going to take this and maybe use bunny stitch over it, it could make this look like it was stitched. So if you have any of the stitching at all, you could, you could X this through and really it will look like you had sewn it versus carved. So the, the look of this font has a lot of versatility. Uh, if you will. And you're going to see some different ways uh, to use it. And I'll talk about that more when we get into the makes, but you could add it or not. So essentially you're getting two wood slices that have these great solid features and you're getting an alphanumeric in this set alphabet. It's very cool. So I do like that. But the one that surprised me the most, I'm going to be completely honest, is this one. And again, a shout out to Lisa, because when I showed her this art, she was like, I have no idea how we're going to do that. 
but man, she absolutely rocked it. And I'm going to tell you why specifically, and I'll kind of do a, a how-to. This is called true love. And the reason I called it true love is because candy is my love language. I love candy. That to me is true love right here, chocolate. Uh, so I saw this art and what I loved about this particular type of art was the perspective that it had. And that I think is what created the challenge. And I think in reading on social media, that also might have created a challenge for uh, many of you who have tried to make it without uh, any instructions. You're just like winging it. And you're like, what? these pieces kind of don't make sense. So I'm gonna break it down and show you uh, how this die plays out and, and really its intention. But what it can create is a box of chocolates, but it doesn't have to create a box of chocolates because all of these components are separate pieces. It could be just a heart box. It could just be a heart. It could be a heart outline, or it could be these pieces of chocolate. The great thing about this is you don't have to cut all of these pieces. I wanted to do this for packaging to show you all of the amazing art that was done, but you could put three or four pieces. You could put two pieces. You could put one piece. You could do chocolate without the heart box. The overall scale is about four by four when you look at the, the heart itself, but again, you don't have to fill it up. Average size of a chocolate, about an inch. That gives you an idea. So they're not massive, they're, they're tiny little pieces. But the die itself, let me actually grab it. I have it over here. I have like, I have my working die. Let me, let me just take it real quick, just to, just to show you. That's kind of my working die. You know, not the, not the pretty package one. I'll, I'll get there after the live, I'll open these up and organize them and do all of those things, okay. Um, so the dies themselves, and I think if you see the breakdown, maybe it will be like, okay, cool. What you need to do, if you, if you have this die set, here's what I would recommend doing, especially if you're gonna store it, say, on magnet sheets or whatever. There are four components to the box itself. There is a base that's going to be kind of the solid foundation, and if you look at these shapes, this is a bit wonky because we wanted to create perspective. That was important about this chocolate box. So this particular heart is a little wonky. This one has a crease rule to show you the next piece that you would lay over the top because this is gonna have a cut line. That's gonna sit over the top and that's where we start building these walls. So you kind of see where it looks like the box has a raised edge. Then there's gonna be a highlight piece. That's gonna be the highlight piece that just adds a different color to that. And then we have this top die. And this top die, this to me is the magical heart. Okay, the thing about this die, this is designed to cut the highlight. So see this really thin outline around the box? But then the negative, in other words, the piece inside is the lid of the box. So you could use the lid of the box. But if you weren't making chocolates, if you were just kind of doing uh, whatever you wanted to do, this heart, if you will, to me is like the perfect Valentine heart. Everybody has a different heart. Some people like primitive hearts. Some people like uh, puffy hearts, chunky hearts. This is like, to me, classic Valentine conversation heart shape. But you can see the detail of that. So you can create a make and you'll see uh, a make that, that Debbie Adams did where you just use this piece. Nah, nothing to do with chocolates. So I want you to see, again, the, the importance of understanding the shapes that are in a die set because sometimes it's only about that where you're like, oh, it's a, it's a chocolate box, I'm not gonna do chocolates. But you're missing out on all the other things you could do if you look beyond the packaging sample. And again, that's why I do lives. So there's that skinny heart, great to, to layer and do things. And then we have this solid heart because this is what's going to pop out of this. That is what's behind it as the box. Now, here's a did you know. Did you know that this heart is scaled and designed for this die? Right? This is the die that we did. This was bow tied. You see that? See that edge right here of this, of this bow? That is the same contour of this heart to put the bow on the box of chocolates. It goes right around it. Did you know that? You could, take, know that. you could take any of these pieces. So if you wanted to wrap your box of chocolates, you could use that. If you wanted to take these ribbon tails, you could add the ribbons to this. So if you have this die, and you could still cut this off, so it's going to look like the chocolate was wrapped. So yeah, if you, I know, see? Everyone's like, what? Because what, I can't say that on the package because they're like, what, what's the bow? I don't know if that's gonna be around, but see, if I cut this off, I cut these tails or leave it, it doesn't matter. Now I could have 
something wrapped just by following that contour of this particular die. And it could still be dimensional, it could be that, but it's just kind of a cool, did you know, thing. Come on with that, did you know? Come on. Hey, Dude, it's... I thought I was, I was the only one who didn't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. Well, you know, I, know I just think when, when you see it, didn't know. because you might, have, you might have bought this die, you might have bought it for the holidays, and you think, well, when am I ever going to use it? But there you go, right there. It was something that, it was an important basic die that could be used so many different ways uh, beyond that. Okay, so just the heart itself, we haven't even got to the candy yet, is a cool thing because if you like to do conversation hearts, I wanted to do a heart big enough that you could take your alphanumeric, any of your favorite fonts, whether it's going to be labeled, whether it's going to be bold, and you could then cut out a word and make a big conversation heart. Remember that. Take an alphanumeric. Maybe I wouldn't do one of these fonts that we did, but we have some really nice basic fonts, even typewriter, if you're into type. And now those are going to be to scale because they're smaller fonts that could turn this into a conversation heart. Anyway, Man. I could go on and on just about that. Because you didn't even know that was all that. You were just like, chocolate, chocolate. And I don't blame you. I would be distracted as well. Uh, what cardstock? I'm going to talk more in detail about cardstock, but this is Sizzix cardstock. Um, I like the texture and color. But I'll talk more about cardstock in the demo. But that is what I've used. Is I, I do a mix of, of ideology cardstock and Sizzix when I do packaging for the makes. Okay, now let's get into the chocolates. If you break down the chocolates this way, super, super simple. Of course, uh, because it's colorized, everything is going to be marked on the back. So it will say like heart one, heart two, heart three, heart four, and you can do it that way. That's totally fine. We wanted to stick with the true colorized thing. But if you just pay attention to the numbers, see the little dash one, you can also identify the shape. The biggest pieces, meaning the ones that have all the, all the ziggity zaggity lines, those are all the same number one. So I don't even look at ones. I'll show you how I sort them. I'm like, okay, that's got a ziggity zaggity. And we're saying like a lot of them. Essentially on the shapes of, of chocolates, we're going to have a heart, a circle, a square, and a rectangle. So those are the base pieces. Then I'm gonna take the next ziggity zaggity, and these are different, this is number two. This one just has a border. See, it doesn't have all that busy business on the inside. So now I'll just look at the border pieces. Easy, I sorted those, that's my next layer. Then I'm going to look for number three. It, and I know like, well, two and three are the same. You'll see when I build it, how I build it, but it doesn't really matter which one. This is it's actually number two, but I build it one, three, two. It doesn't really matter. I don't want to confuse you any more than maybe you already are. But the next one is going to be chocolate, the base with a partial ziggity zaggity. So now I'm going to find the shapes that just have that partial. Put those together. Then all I'm left with are very clean, smooth shapes. So there again, a perfect little heart die some wo a wonky circle, a wonky rectangle, and a wonky square. Those are all smoothie. They've got no, no other angles. There's my four pieces. And then all that I have left with are icing, frosting. And we wanted to do different scale. This was also important that if you're going to uh, decorate something that's shaped like a heart, we wanted things that would look like you were decorating a heart, not just one ziggity zag that you put over everything. Same thing, something that would have more of a rectangular design, maybe something that would have more of a square design, or maybe something that would have more of a circular design. You could use them on whatever you want. And in fact, all of these, I wanted to make sure you had a tiny little heart. So that little design was a repeat on every piece, just because you can never have enough love. So we just wanted to put that little heart on every, every one so it, you weren't like, oh gosh, I need to get that one die to cut the little hearts. So that's really it. And this is how simple it is to build it, and you'll see why I do it. The papers, I think, might have been the confusing part of this, and it depends on where you buy your chocolates. Some people put chocolates in white papers. Sometimes the papers are foiled. Sometimes the papers are beige. I like C's candy, no surprise. Those papers are dark brown. So these are my paper colors. So these first two dyes, the ones that have all the, the jaggedy bits on the outside, that is really the paper cup. Think about that. So whatever color you want your paper cup to be, that's what you're going to do these dies in. And if you if you store them and you want to even you know write paper cup, it will remind you like that's the that's the paper piece. These next two are your chocolate. Now these could match or they could not match. And you might think like, well, why did you put that little jaggedy thing on a piece of chocolate? Because when you look at the the sample, 
I wanted it to look like you were looking at these chocolates from different angles. If you've ever looked into a box of chocolates, they have contour, they're not just flat. So by creating that offset, it gives to me a better perspective. That probably freaks out most people's freaks. And if you're not into that, I get it. This is probably not the box of chocolates for you. But to me, this gives it such, more, such a, a whimsical or more playful vibe. And so that little jaggedy edge, wherever that is on the chocolate, you know that you can set it up against that outline and that's what's gonna offset that chocolate. This one, this is going to be your visible chocolate. So this one, this is the one that really matters. Are you a milk chocolate, dark chocolate, white dark, chocolate, whatever? Dark, dark. That's gonna be your chocolate color paper and then your choice of icing. And you'll see that on a lot of the dies, you could even use different pieces. So for example, on this one, it cuts all those little hearts, just that one die. So like that is value in my opinion, because on the sample, I use the skinny pieces, skinny, 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 and that little heart. On this one, I use the leftovers, those wide pieces. So you're gonna get some, some nice surprises. This one, you're gonna have a tiny little pinked heart that comes out of uh, that die. Just don't ever underestimate the power of a die, man. That's the thing. So when you take this, you put the highlight of the paper. That's all this is. It's just kind of the highlight that you can see the top of the paper cup. Because when I look into a box of C's, like that is shiny, shimmery, splendid. Yeah. Like all of that. I love those papers. Um, and I love the sound, that little crackly sound. Then you've got your base layer chocolate, your top layer chocolate. So that's where it gives it that dimension right there. And then your icing. And it equals true love. Now this one, because I wanted to add a little shine, I just added a little glossy accents. After it was assembled to just the chocolate part. So you can see that I left the paper untouched. That's what's nice about glossy accents. It will hold its shape. You simply create an outline, fill it up, and that's it. Glossy accents will never ooze out. It will maintain its barriers. But that's very, very simple. As long as you understand those shapes and see once it's broken down, easy. Paper, paper, base chocolate, top chocolate, icing. And the icing could be glittery. It could be sparkly. It could be anything you want it to be. But to me, that is true love. And it's very simple and there's a lot of fun. And hey, that was just the chocolate, right? I mean, forget the whole value of this conversation heart, the outline and the bow. See, did you know? And if you don't watch the live, that to me is where I think people underestimate all that is put into a die. But there's no way to explain all of what's in my popcorn brain here. You just can't. So I hope you guys like that die. I love it. Uh, Lisa, again, thank you for taking on that challenge and, and sticking with the oddity of it because it is, it would be very easy to make everything symmetrical and go, okay, right, we have an outline, we'll put another piece and we'll do a chocolate. Yeah, but then to me, it wouldn't have this, this look where there's pieces on top of each other and you know, that's the kind of chocolate box I want where there is, there is no real estate. I wanna pack it in, so. Oh, you guys talking C's candy? You're going to totally distract me and be like, I'm going. Yeah, I love it. I love it. Okay. So now you guys know about true love. Hopefully it's a, just makes a little bit more sense. I think it's important. All right, let me put this over here. Okay. I'm going to stack it up. Next one, we'll talk about flowers. Again, to me, a triumph, this die. And here's why. Brush stroke flowers, I've done brush strokes where we've done brush stroke florals. We'll even, we've even done brush stroke in the, the festive arena. And these were all inspired by watercolor that Lisa goes in and takes a watercolor and kind of interprets it in a dye. And that's what creates all these organic shapes, but also these organic highlights and lowlights. And typically, because this is number one, I have them later, layered on the back, one, two, three, and four. These are all the brush strokes that we've created through the years. And these are very large scale and they were designed that way. They were designed that you could uh, make a nice statement on a card. Uh, if you were doing journals, you just had a beautiful flower to work with, especially if you're doing stamping, inking, mixed media. And I was like, wouldn't it be cool if we could take this idea and just shrink it down as much as possible. Now it creates a lot of little pieces, but to me, there's a whole different approach to this one than you would these. So this is uh, Brushstroke Flowers Mini. And it's important to know mini is mini. Okay, this entire arrangement is one inch. This entire arrangement is an inch and a quarter. This entire arrangement, inch and three quarters. But they are beautiful because they have such an organic look. And you'll see from the makes that 
how you interpret these dyes, whether you're using ink or cardstock or anything, will actually change its appearance. Uh, when you see the make from, from Debbie Adams in this live, oh my gosh, like, I'm not going to give it away. But it can change the appearance. Now, there's many ways to interpret these. You could go in the, the solid cardstock route. To me, that's going to take a lot of time because you're going to need to find so many different color pieces. My advice for this die set is cut it out of watercolor cardstock or whatever paper you like to color and then ink each piece as you want to build it. So you can already have your, if, you, if you're using Xyron, you could do your adhesive on the back or adhesive sheets, cut it out of watercolor paper, then go in and color. Use Distress Ink, your Oxides, your Distress Watercolor Pencils, Copic Mark, whatever you want to do or just watercolor, but that's much easier because you don't have to, because the elements on the dies, I'm gonna try to shake it down here. All the pieces like to make a leaf are all on the same die. So all those little ziggity zaggities and all those pieces to create this leaf are all on the same die because otherwise you wouldn't know what, what zig goes with what zag. And it was important that you, you did. And, and honestly, there's a little bit of creative freedom here when you're building these. They don't have to line up in a specific place. You can have this highlight offset anywhere you want uh, on these flowers. But once you get into it, and I think those of you that have made it, and I love reading the comments on social for those that bought this die and used it, like once you get in it, you're in it. It, it seems intimidating at first, but once you start cutting that and getting out your inks, you like, you become a florist. You can't stop playing with these. And these were just the, the inspiration, meaning the flowers are completely separate dyes than the leaves. These were just arrangements I made. You could see like, this is the same leaf as this totally different flowers. So it, it's not like you're going to cut this particular arrangement. These leaves are the same as these leaves. So you'll get like the roses, these, these, but then you get different leaf dyes. And that's where it becomes very fun, especially if you're building even into ideology that you can go in and create this. Oh, good, Alexis. Yeah. Well, you're going to rock it. I know that. But I, I think that you have to just give yourself anytime it's something new. I always want to give yourself that permission to experience it. That I think is makers. So many of us get frustrated when it's not perfect the first time because you've not done it before because it's fiddly or it's tiny. It really is not that bad if you just kind of get in the zone. It's, it's amazing. It really is. I absolutely love uh, those, those elements. And you'll see because they're scaled to a lot of other things that we did in this release. Now, once we go small, it doesn't mean we don't want to go big. Uh, Perspective Butterfly was a huge die that we did. Perspective, I think we did a dragonfly to that, or insect. It, there's something about changing perspective when you not only shrink a design, but just max out the scale of a design. And this is Blossom. And I know that this is Jeanette's favorite die. She told me, <laughs> and I'm glad in her makes, you'll see. And what makes this die so cool is its scale. It is a four inch flower. So if this is going on a card, this is the card, unless your card is big or, or you offset it, but that's where perspective comes in. You can use it in its entirety, but it's, it's really designed that you can cut it in different areas. You could have it come in from the corner of a card. It could come in from the side of a card and you could change the perspective about this design. I also wanted to start playing around with detail, not quite brush stroke it needed to be a little bit more a little bit more doable so all of the layers for the flower are connected layers so if you look here the brown that is the base flower so when you cut that out you're going to get one full solid shape of this flower then the next one is cream it's also the shape but it's got a lot of areas cut out so wherever you see brown there is no cream okay so it's going right to the base then we have this pink layer that also sits on the top and again creates those layers. These could be used together to create this blossom or independent. You can use a shaping kit and actually sculpt these to make all types of different, like almost like a mum where the flower is curling into itself. You don't have to glue all these pieces to the end. The inside has a bit of a, a cool art design. Again, I'm not going to give it away, but that's fun. Same thing with the center. We've got those layers there and this giant leaf three and a quarter for that leaf. So Blossom is, is fun. And I think it is important when I'm designing that I play around with scale because not everybody even has the interest or the patience to do something small, but sometimes depending on what you're working on, maybe it is an art journal. You wanna be able to take a, a mixed media background and cut, die cut this and actually see your art in the shape. 
Think about that. Sometimes if, if a die is too small, you lose all of the interest uh, of a mixed media background. So keep that in mind when you're cutting this out. You don't have to add these two top layers. If you just like that blossom shape, cut that out of your, your mixed media elements and, and off you go. Same thing with the leaf, just a large silhouette. Okay, and we'll get into, well, a little sweetness, a little bunny. Uh, I, I need to do bunnies, I, I get that. I'm not much of a bunny guy, but they're fun and I love to see what people do with bunnies. I know last year we did bunny games and that was so cute, but, but people took it in, in so many different areas. And again, if you watch the remix, you saw that I did bunny games at Christmas. So I'm really happy with this. I wanted to create a different theme. Again, throughout the years, I, whoop, I keep kicking this media mat. That's what you did. It's all right. No, it's just, uh, it's because I did a, I did a quick pivot because I have these over here because I was just looking at the, sometimes I like to take a trip down memory lane myself, right? So this was like, wow, how bunnies have come a long way. You know, I used to do bunnies as like steel ruled eyes, those big silhouette rabbits. And then remember this one? This was from Vintage Art. Love that kind of hippity hop, really fun. And then remember this guy, the carrot bunny, where it just, I mean, if you look stylistically how different it is, and it had this carrot and these little arms and you could slide it under and it's got a big carrot, so you could have three or four of them outline. Um, oh, then this one, bunny games. See, I was even looking at wood grain, like how it changes. It's very interesting how, how styles can change. And I think that's also important as a maker that you get a different thing to add, or maybe you've never liked a bunny so far, and maybe you still don't like this one. But I always want to challenge myself to find something stylistically different. Again, I talked about that in the remix, that you have to look at the style of a design. So this is where Bunny Stitch um, was inspired by. I wanted something that had some different poses, maybe something a little bit more primitive, if you will, where it, it wasn't so cutesy. But I like that it has a silhouette design, so that base black is is a framelit that goes around here. So when you cut this, you're gonna get that solid bunny silhouette. That in itself is great for an Easter card. It makes a great shakety shake. So if you wanna fill that in with like Easter grass at the bottom and little shakety bits, then you just use the frame and you're gonna get the silhouette of these rabbits. And that's why those poses were important because they create a cute silhouette. Then you have a top layer and that's it. The top layer actually has all of these cutouts that show the base layer. So the design or the detail those aren't little pieces that you're adding. Those are all cutouts that show the base color. So if your base color was red, it would be a red-eyed rabbit. Keep that in mind. So you could also fill in the blanks with pieces. You could cut out pieces and, and pop in negatives. And it doesn't have to be. You'll see some, from some of the makes, you can cut it multiple times and actually get some of these pieces to pop in different colors or fill it in. And we also did the same idea with a carrot, a heart, and an egg. And then you have this strip of stitches. And honestly, we just used the same art that we did on that die that I showed before because those were perfect. I know Lisa and I, we started making them. I'm like, you know what? That, those stitches are like, you can't beat them. Let's just put them on there because maybe you don't have that die. Maybe you do, but now you have a stitch strip. So you don't have to add these X's. If they freak you out, don't use them. But I like them that you could X out an eye to make it look like it was stitched on. I like that these elements could look stitched. And yes, you can cut uh, felt out of this die. So you'll see a make of that, that you can really give it that. I saw somebody mention Velveteen Rabbit. You can give it that handmade look. Yeah, I agree, Roseanne. So it's just a different style and very cute. And I like that we gave uh, three different options. You know, this guy, he's about four inches tall, three inches, kind of three and a quarter in between. So, but I like their floppy ears too. But funny, like I take a trip down, I'm like, my gosh, the style so, so different. So different. But sometimes, a style can mimic a style, right? I say right. I, really, I, right. I told myself that I wasn't gonna do that and but that's because you're it's just who I am. It's just, I talk to myself yeah. all the time and, and I like, we have great conversations, me, myself and I. Okay, this one, I love this one. This was colorized and I'm a huge fan of coffee. Not so much tea, but I know there's tea drinkers out there. So coffee and tea, I think, you know, you, you can't have one without the other if you're, if you're doing a design. And I love the style of this. I love the color blocking of this. I like the modern spin of this. But these are big. These were big scale pieces because uh, back then when we were working on Colorize, we needed to keep that in mind. Um, were those pieces identifiable? But as we do Colorize, you know, Colorize was really about highlighting a color. It's nothing new about, about building. You're like, well, hello, Captain Obvious. We've been die cutting things out of different colors and gluing them together. That's not it. Colorize was really giving you the roadmap to do it like a coloring book. 
I was just giving you a roadmap of how to build those colors. But then I also throw in some dyes where we call them paper cut. And paper cut is essentially the idea of colorize where you can build it, but it simplifies those pieces even more. And that's where this one came in. So this is paper cut cafe. It's a whole slew of little cups and saucers. Some of them could be coffee mugs. So it's not necessarily this coffee cup, but it's different mugs that could be hot chocolate, coffee, tea, could be anything. They all have different styles. I mimic this kind of off of, I don't know, it has a little Fiesta Wear vibe. Mario loves those, those colors. So I wanted to do the packaging very playful, but these are super simple. You have five different cup designs. You have two different saucer designs and then you have the steam and or the smoke that you can use separate or together, or you can use the wide one, the skinny one, a lot of options, and they're very easy to build as well. The other cool thing about this is each cup not only has those highlights, this is a one, two, three build on the cup, super simple. Same with the saucer, a one, two, three build. But then there's also this liquid piece. See that inside? That is a separate die. And the reason I wanted to do that is because you, depending on how you drink your coffee or tea, I wanted that to mimic that. Or again, if you're doing hot chocolate, maybe you want to add little white dots for marshmallows. So I wanted the liquid to be a separate piece. So the build of this, if you see it, again, it's going to be, even though it's not colorized, the dyes are numbered one, two, three. So you get it. So it'd be like cup one, A, B, C. So you'll get the layers, but your base layer is dark. Your medium layer is mid-tone and then you have a highlight. And these have crease rule in them. I don't know if you can see that little crease rule. So you know exactly where that piece goes. See those little, those little lines, deboss lines? That's the crease rule for the next one. And look at how thin that detail is. Again, I talked about pushing spec. Little details, little highlights. So all you do is cut this out and if you already have it, you know, Zyron or sticky, it's just stick, boom, boom, boom. Same with the steam and then there is your liquid. That is a separate piece that you could die cut your liquid. You don't have to use the negative because I wanted some space. So if you look at the assemble, you can see that even though there's liquid, you can see a little bit of that color reveal in the die. That's where Lisa really rocks, where she just, she hears my muse. Cause she's like, well, they could just use the negative for the liquid. I'm like, yeah, but wouldn't it be cool if the liquid was a little smaller than that? So you could actually see it. And she's like, yeah, it would be cool. And that's why we do it. It's, it's those little details that maybe you think, what is that piece for when I have it? It's so you get to pick what color you want this to be. And you can also pick what cup goes with which saucer. You don't have to put this one with this one. These are, they're separate elements. The, it's just done the same way. So the cups are one set of dies, the saucers are other, very simple, simple to do. But I wanted to do something else. And this is something that I learned back in the days of Biggs when I did a, a Biggs, I think it was, I don't know what it's called, tea time or something it was a teacup. So, Believe it or not, in each of these dies, and I'll show you from this one, in each of these two layers, let me see if I can peel this off. Yeah, I can. Okay. Both of these layers, not only is it gonna cut the shape, but there's actually a cut line right there. See that little smiley face? There, it's a smiley face. I'm not gonna go into a puppet show, but that little slice are in both of these layers. Why? because if you build it, it doesn't really matter. But if you wanna stack the cups, all of these dies, and I'll try to lift this out as careful as I can. Let me just pull this, there we go. These can interlock with each other to create the stacking effect. That's why the cut is in every one of these cups. If you stick it down, it doesn't matter. You could be done. Okay? But if you want to, what is the best paper? Whatever cardstock, I work from 80, to, 80 pound to 130. I don't know the GSM but Google will, will convert that. But I like Sizzix cardstock and Ideology cardstock. But really, any color cardstock is going to work. But if you like a lot of colors, Sizzix is great because it gives you a lot of colors. And again, I'll talk about that during the demo a little bit more. So here you can see that you can slide this one and you can make it as wonky as you want. So you can make a, a tea party or whatever. You can take this next one, you can slide that in and you can stack this so you can have them curve around the card, you can do whatever you want, but that is why that cut is there. That cut is there by design, so you could essentially stack these cups and use them however you want. Pretty fun if you just think of that. So I wanted to highlight that because sometimes people are like, oh, my die is cutting where it shouldn't. I'm like, eh, no, it's cutting where it should. 
but that's really why we did it. So you don't have to use it that way, but it's cool to know that you can, right? Okay, moving on. Now we're getting into, <sighs> I was like, whenever I get an industrial or steampunk design, I'm like, whoop, whoop, I like it. Okay, first up, we're going to talk about uh, this alphanumeric. This is called Emporium, and it's an inch and a quarter tall. What I love about this font, it, I don't know, it, it evokes so many feels. It, it evokes, uh, you know, something industrial, something superhero, something steampunk, something great Gatsby. I, like, I could go the gamut of, of this, what this font kind of resonates to me. What I love about this is not only does it cut this beautiful design, but it cuts out these perfect highlights. And again, a shout out to Lisa, because the importance of even how these end, Right, so you see that little hook on the E? Do you see that tapered edge on the R? That highlight was super important to me to create that look and feel. It needed to be very blocky, but also keep a slightly rounded contour. And I love it. So when you cut this out, it will cut out the letter and cut out those negative drops. Now, if you were really fancy, you could cut it out of two different colors and you could you know, pop those pieces back in if you didn't want your background to show through because they're large enough that they will cut clean and you could pop them back in. But I love, I love this font because to me, this font also resonates with me as someone that loves steampunk vintage things. So speaking of steampunk vintage things, we've got this, this die, this group, I'm trying to show you in there, the pieces, the gentleman. And what I need to explain about the gentleman is if you have it, you're gonna need to open it so you, you understand the piece because the dies, if you see the die count, five, five dies, which means these guys are separate from these pieces. So even though they look like that is the silhouette, because we've had a, a couple of people commenting saying, oh, I got my dies and it's broken because this isn't connected. They, they weren't designed to be connected. There are five separate dies. You can even see on the, the art, five separate dies, because you can utilize these pieces or not. You can utilize this uh, this parasol, if you wanted to lean it against him, if you wanted to uh, have him hold a cane, if you wanted to take this, I'm gonna, again, just try to peel this off. The longer the longer stuff sticks to paper, the, the less likely it is to come off. So this, this great parasol, could also hook over his elbow if you wanted to hang there. It can also slide through his arm if you wanna hang it there. It can also hook off of the back there. So you can mix and match these pieces however you want, and I just wanna make sure that you understand that they're great silhouettes, big enough silhouettes that you can not only cut these out, but also uh, have some pieces behind it. And you'll see some inspiration, uh, I'm sure throughout the year with these, because you could, for example, cut this out, use the negative space and back it with other, other pieces. That's why I wanted to do something really big, really bold. These are almost five inches tall. So this is a card front, but this you'll also see from the makes, great for et cetera, tags, vignettes, all types of things. So the gentlemen, they're, they're very cool. Then we've got this one, and this was inspired by a stamp set, um, but this is called Tailored, and this is, this is the die set. This is not a, a framelit, these are dies. These are dies that are designed to create dimensional pieces. Again, the inspiration was that stamp, but you can see that it's designed to actually cut and create dimensional pieces. So for example, the hats, you've got the base layer, your highlights and the band, and then on these pieces, you actually have the, this jacket, and I'll show you, see if I can peel the foam tape. But these pieces, this is one die that folds back to create the collar. So these pieces all already have a, a score line, and I'll, I'll demo that so you can see a little bit more how these work. But you can just pop them up with a little foam tape to create the collar. So the piece itself, you've got a base piece, then you've got these shoulder pieces where you fold back the collar. That's why if you look, this is textured, this is the back side of that cardstock. Can you see that? All right. Same thing on the inside. That's the back side of your base layer. Then you have this little vest that pops right in there. So you have two different designs. You know, one is a little bit sharper, a little pointier, maybe more tuxedo. One's a little bit wider, a little rounded, maybe a suit. You got a cool straw hat, very similar to the design there. And then you have these ties, all different types of bow ties. And I liked leaving the back on there. Certainly if you wanted to not use the back piece, you can. I'll show you uh, when I demo how that works because you can just take off a top layer and you still have, have the ties the way it was designed. And then you have 
uh, this necktie. A lot of fun with this, but again, that inspiration was there. And yes, you can see, I know Zoe uh, Hillman especially has just kind of made it her, her mark, if you will, about doing you know hats with things inside. And we've done that with stamps uh, for years, but this is a, it's just a fun die design because you can build something a little bit more dimensional. And that's really what I like. All right, <laughs> and we got this one. You can't not <clears throat> show it and laugh about it because it's fun. Are we doing good, Mario? Doing great. Okay. So this is Colorized Road Trip. And I have to say, very whimsical. See, you never know the style. Like, how do you go from, you know, I have no idea, from, from steampunk to flowers to bunnies. But my brain's just like, boop, I like it. It's fun. I just love Road Trip. It, it has a really fun vibe. I don't know, almost like a Jetson vibe. But of course, they were in spaceships, not cars. But you get it. Kind of that cartoon thing. But it's, it's very sketched and fun really big so you could put things in this car if you want and you'll see from the makes all the ideas but just so you understand road trip so road trip is designed to have a lot of highlight pieces highlight pieces that go on the cars the tires it creates that perspective in the front and the back i will tell you that on my sample i didn't put two little highlight pieces so when you see that little die you're like where do those highlights go it's not on your packaging but it'll be on the animation uh, on youtube that Sizzix does so we have that. <clears throat> then we have the trees. The trees are just fun and cool. Then we have a, a sign, a great sign that could be used for a national park, forest, this direction, whatever. A couple of suitcase pieces. These are not attached to the car. It is separate. So you could add them or not if you don't want to. It's kind of like a sleeping bag or a tent and a suitcase. Then you have this string piece over the top. This little puff right here could be exhaust but it could also be a cloud. And you'll see from the makes, it, it was designed to be scaled that you could have it coming out of the back of the car or you could put it uh, behind that. Or, hey, I'm thinking this is gonna make a really cool thing of, of maybe cotton candy or ice cream per celebrate. I have to see that right now to see if it even fits. Oh, it might be a little small. Ooh, maybe it could be popcorn. Couldn't that be a popcorn kernel, you guys? You know it. Or maybe it could be, yeah, you'd need a box, but I'm thinking this is more popcorn than ice cream. Won't work with Celebrate, but there we go. I like that idea of popcorn. I see popcorn clouds in my future, Mario. Yeah, I wonder where all that popcorn comes from. Okay, so while we were designing this, and we had a car and we had a tree, we were designing this and we were getting into the holiday season, and I said to Lisa, I'm like, hey, what if we just kind of change this a little bit and just add one other die and make it relevant for next Christmas. I understand this die just came out. We just finished Christmas. It wasn't out for Christmas, but if you have it, you can use it next Christmas. And so inside this set, you'll see all these little die pieces. There's one little bonus die that's not shown on this package. So I want to tell you what it is. So if you get it and you're like, what is this? Or if you see somebody online saying, what does this die go for? Cause I don't see it on the package. You'll know what it is. And the bonus die that's in here, is a die that allows this tree to be tied to the roof. Take that tree, that's why if you look at the tree now, you may not have noticed it, one side is flat, okay? This side is a little too pointy. You don't notice it standing up, but when you see it here, it is a flat line. Why? I wanted you to be able to tie it to the roof of the car. So this little tie is that bonus die. This is a totally different tie than this one. See, this one needed that vertical height to tie these on. This is a different horizontal one. So that tie is really to tie the tree on. And you can see that it just lays perfectly flat over that. So if you have this die or if you get this die and you wanted to create, just remember that uh, when Christmas comes and you want to tie things and you want to have fill this with presents or maybe you make this a little shakety shake and you got snow going in there, you know, no place like home for the holidays, driving home for Christmas, whatever you think just remember that one die because otherwise it is not mentioned here and i just wanted to do something fun i know it's not what we normally do it's unconventional and i'm okay with that that's what i am because it's like well what do we tell them we tell them nothing we tell them it's a surprise and when people ask we can kind of enlighten them and of course when we get into the holiday season i will definitely share uh, this make and, and another reminder but just so you know if you have this die to to remember that and yes i think there is value in watching these lives because it's these little nuggets of did you knows that you needed to know. Cute, right? So yeah, you may not pack, but man, at Christmas time, that is gonna be the cutest. And I'm telling you this now, and this is not like, ooh, oh, warning, warning. I don't know if this die will be around at Christmas. Who knows? I'm, I'm not in control over the life cycle of dies with Sizzix. 
it would be great if it is, but if it isn't, you're already set, right? Okay. That's it for the dies. Let's get into the textures and then we're going to uh, talk about the makes. Wow, my stack is, I, it's, it's actually going, it's actually going pretty well. Well, I'm gonna do a, I'm gonna do a little transfer right here. I'm gonna move these over. I can see, that. I'll just move this out of the way while you're moving your stuff over. Okay. What else do you need? That, I'm good. good. We're gonna talk about 3D embossing. I do love embossing. We did two 3Ds and one multi-level. What's the difference between these when we talk about uh, what's a 3D or multi-level? A 3D is a design that is designed to be more contoured. I work with Ryan at Sizzix and the contour of that is so the texture has, has some shape. It has some rises, some falls, but it's all very fluid. Multi-level is a very basic way of building levels. You will see the distinct levels. They're not smoothed out. So the art that we choose for multi-level is designed that you want to identify each layer, each multi-level, if that makes sense, okay? So when it comes to working with these folders, I wanted to do different things. And there's reasons behind all of these, so I'll talk about that as we go into each one. So this first one, dotted. See, I don't, I don't never remember what they're called, so I always look. I kind of guess, but. So dotted, I know that I've done circuit, which has a little bit more of a digital look. But dotted is just that, they're dots. And if you look at the multi-level, you can identify base level, that's smooth, second level, top level. So you can, you can really break that down. And I love this design because it's just a very cool pattern. It could have a modern vibe, just doing it on white. I always love to show the texture on white. It could have an industrial vibe. Look at that, I'm metallic with paint. We'll demo that, we'll talk about how cool that is. So this is really great if you're doing steampunk, maybe you don't want all those circuit lines, it's great for that. But it also was really designed for more of a whimsical vibe, believe it or not. I know that when you first started, you're like, oh yeah, steampunk digital. No, really, the inspiration for this was more whimsical, something to go with celebrate, something that could be, I don't know, more confetti-like. So this design, I know a little crazy when you see it like that, but this, was des this is designed that when you use it with color, meaning if you ink your folder with color and spray it, you can get a colorful background that could kind of look like confetti. So if you did celebrate, you've got all these little colors dripping down the bottom. This one is done on watercolor cardstock. This one is done on glossy cardstock. So the, the effect is completely different. Watercolor, you're gonna get much more of a fluid look. Glossy, you get more of those little specks. But I love, I love the effect of both of these. So. Uh, what's nice, of course, is you don't have to do it rainbowy. I was just trying to prove a point, but you could certainly do uh, an industrial grungy look too. If you didn't want to do metallic, you could still ink your folder with uh, distress inks or oxide, even archival, but distress ink or oxide allows me to spray the folder and that's what creates this b blend. But if you look at the, the papers, they just have a different look. This one is a little bit more intense color-wise than this, but still beautiful, still fun. So imagine doing Celebrate on there. A little party hat, the streamers in there. Can you kind of get the confetti vibe? No, it's just me. I don't know. I, I like it. That's really what I wanted to, to do. But it's also great to have a variety of a design when you see it. So, That's so see? Cool. It's night and day. yeah, you don't underestimate. Yeah, I just saw Ursula said, you know, the metallics for like New Year's, absolutely, for the ball drop. But never under, uh, underestimated design because sometimes you see it and you're like, eh, I don't get it. But, you know, when you, when you change it up, you get it. I do. I do love it. Yeah, I love the, the confetti idea of it because it's fun. It's a cool modern look. Then we'll get into, oh, I love this one, mosaic. Well, you know, uh, uh, no surprise that I love organic things when it comes to 3D. With We've done brick and wood grain and cobblestone. Um, and I was, uh, I just, I love this design. And here's why. I call it a mosaic. It's almost like because cobblestone was already used. I already used cobblestone on another one, but I do love the idea of, of just this circular pattern. So just the circular design was interesting to me right out of the gate. But then I liked that this was actually a photograph of these tiles and there were tiles that were missing. And I was like, leave that like that. Do not fill in the blanks. Do not add another tile. I, I loved that because to me, it gives it a, even a more organic look. But the detail of this guys, the texture, is ridiculous is ridiculous because they're they're not smoothie that's the difference of this of 3d when 
When I do 3D with Sizzix, y yes, you can do a 3D shape and have contour, but I also want texture. I want every little crack and seam and pit and mark and uh, imperfection and dip. So if you looked at it, it, these are not all flat on the top. No way. Every single one of them is dipped and that's where uh, just Ryan shines because you can make an authentic looking cobblestone or mosaic background. This is ink and resist spray. I'll demo this. It's, it's just a, a very cool way to add something super organic. Or maybe you have cactus. Maybe you have the funky cactus style or you're doing Southwest. How about doing some cool terracotta tile or flagstone? I mean, how beautiful is that design in a totally different color? So this could be artsy. This could be metallic. This could be stone, but this could also be some type of clay or tile. And it's just, it's beautiful. The effect is cool, but you can see those missing, <laughs> those missing tiles. They're just cool. I love how how that just transforms the, the look of this one. It's a great design and the texture, that's where it's gonna grab all that medium. That's why it's important to me when I'm designing it because I know that when I'm gonna use crayons or ink or anything, ugh, I want it to grab all that grunge, all that little grimy bit. See all those little specks? That's because of the texture. That's, see, you can see that, oof, okay. Then, and I'll show you, you know what? I have some stacks here. Let me see. I've got this one. Okay, this is what I was talking about. This was cobblestone. So see the difference? These are, this is great stone. Ooh, I love this one. But so different to, to this. Same but different, but great effects. And I like that this one comes in mini. Okay, let's talk about, let's talk about this one. So entangled. And entangled is really interesting because let's face it, I've done a lot of flourishes. There again, that was one of those trip down memory lanes. And I don't know the names of them, so... Don't quote me on it, but this was probably one of the first I did. Maybe this was called like botanic or botanical. I have no idea, but it, it was kind of flourishy. This was my first play into, into working with 3D. I really liked that. And then we worked with multi-level. So this one, you can see the definite breaks. See, now you know the difference between multi-level and 3D. You can see those breaks, which is great. I think this was maybe called swirls, maybe. I don't know. That's a multi-level. And then we had this one. Ooh, elegant, beautiful, big swooshes of, of swirls. And all of these designs were from different types of artwork. This was from a stone. This was actually digital art. You could tell we need digital art when we do multi-level. This was from a, a tile, a relief tile. So you can see kind of that, that graduated curve. Elegant was beautiful. Instead it's called botanical. Oh, see, thanks, Jen. So I think I got them right. Maybe botanical, swirls, and elegant, I'm guessing. This entangled, so not to confuse you, this is the new one, and this is what makes Entangled freaking rock. This art was uh, licensed from leatherwork, tooling. So the detail and texture of this one is ridiculous. I mean, come on, come on. That <laughs> is, that is freaking awesome. That and it and it was just like when I saw it, it. That's why I was like Entangled. It was just like I couldn't. I didn't really get like a swooshy, flourishy. I just got like. It could be wrought iron, it, it could be anything. Everything was just entangled, but the texture, again, look at all those ripply bits on the top, the, the imperfect dots, because that was hand done, and that's where we got that, that design. The imperfections of this is what sold me on it, and I love uh, how Ryan was able to capture that crisp detail of the rise and the fall of this one. It doesn't have that shape, that contour the Elegant had. This one is very, uh, crisp and, and defined here because again, leather tooling, it's like, you know, once it's in there, it's in there. Um, but, but the texture on here, man, it opens up a whole heap of possibilities. Metallic. So this is, again, I'll demo this one. This is metallic cardstock. This is paper, by the way, cardstock. But take a look at that. How, how beautiful in gold, in silver or pewter. I mean, you could put this on a box and it will literally look like metal that's the that's the difference that relief you don't appreciate the texture until you do it and then you're like my how is that even possible and then you've got just that great copper copper bronze and it doesn't even have to be shiny metallics it could even be like black metallic look at that one Woohoo! oxidized that is yum my gosh yum or you can take your inked backgrounds for those that have followed uh, any of the q and remember how we did this with paper? Yes, it's paper and distressed paint, how we did that eroded metallic. 
Take a look at eroded metallic where we create patina or oxidize. I just took that eroded metallic background that I did, I don't even know how long ago, ran it through, a little crayon, a little yum, hello beautiful, hello beautiful. Did you hear that when you did that last night? Yeah. He's not lying. I do like to prep the night before, that's just how I roll. So that's why I can't judge, but see, so that's taking, you can do paper, but you can also do a background technique that you love and see how that plays with new folders. But to me, these all have a very distinctive look. This is uh, quite elegant in the, in the metallic. This has definitely more of a vintage look. This has more of a patina look. And just by itself, or if you did it in a pearlized cardstock, would have a beautiful, elegant wedding look to it. So quite interesting when you look at that. Never underestimate the power of a shape or a texture. Never, never, never. It's just, whew. So good. Okay. So that's the release. Believe it or not, I think maybe that was only 16 SKUs. So it's not, it's not huge, but it's going to be something that we're going to, to support and inspire all year. So here we go. Let's get into the makes and a shout out to the makers who, again, just my gosh, just, yes. Thanks. Okay. I think I'm good. I, I mean, I might call it back, but you never, you never know. Okay. So the makers really just, how they take designs and, and run with it, I love. Yes, we, we have a meeting initially and we talk about a Zoom and uh, I kind of give them the inspiration, but they take it and run with it. And what's interesting about this first one is um, we've got the makes, but funny enough, I got a card from my friends at Sizzix. Taylor at Sizzix made this, so this is, this is my birthday card from, uh, from the Sizzix team. But I love that it was using this die and I'm like, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick off live with this. A great great birthday card because it uses celebrate which i love there's the cake and then it uses bulletin so you can see just hbd how great is that for a birthday happy birthday i i use that bitmoji all the time hbd so it's really fun to use something so bold whether you wanted to put it a number or a year but a great way to use celebrate with that and i loved it so yeah thanks taylor thanks Sizzix. i love that card so i needed to bring it in there all right so for the makers i will have all of the makers makes um Post it on the blog at the at the end. Do I need to move? Am I standing on something? Okay, thanks. Um, at, at the end of the live, I'll have it on timholtz.com. Also, the makers uh, share their makes on social media. If you're not following the makers, go to timholtz.com, click on the maker page, uh, and, and check that out. So what's really great is having so many different uh, styles from makers. That's what, to me, proves the value of a design, if you will. So we got a shakety shake. So we know that's going to be joy, a little shakety shake with we'll celebrate. And there again, little confetti back there. So even if you use it as a background, which you did, we have those little sparkly stars. That's part of the celebrate die set. See, those could be shakety bits that go around. Look at those little, those little streamers, also shakety bits. So those little streamers and stars that are part of celebrate make great shaketies with the sequence. I love the party hat. I love the balloons, the different shapes in there. And then we have that stamped celebrate. So how fun to have those die cut elements as shakety bits. And I, this is, I, I gotta, I need to get with you, Joy. I, I like, this is kind of my shake thing. Cause it, it doesn't seem to have the wall of doom that I'm always so nervous about, you know, getting a little leaker. I like that. It's just in a bag. So very, very cute card. Then we've got some cards. Paula was like, gosh, Paula, you were just inspired by just making a bunch. All right. So Paula made a bunch with celebrate. And I like that. You know, when, when a maker takes something and just has so many different ideas and see those all play out, it's, it's perfect. So here you can see there's wood grain in the background. Love that out of wood grain. Taking that number from bulletin, just putting it on repeat and creating a background with that. That's beautiful. I love the little patterns, the little stamped designs on there. I love the metallic used as the base layer for the balloons because it just gives it such a, a little shine. Using a little sparkly there. And then that is an ideology label sticker to put celebrate you. So really clever to take uh, an element, whether it's a number or a year or an initial and create a background on repeat with bulletin. That's what's nice about that font. Besides that, it's got a cool style to it. Uh, it just has a, a presence that allows you to, to make it the main feature. Another great use of a bulletin in celebrate. So cut this out twice and then just switch it. Because remember, when you cut this out, it's going to cut out the solid and the outline in the same pass for that letter. So if you cut it out of two different cardstocks, you just flip it and you get two different outlines. I love that it's just happy, happy. And you can see uh, the detail of that die. You can see the crease rule. 
in those streamers and you can see that the, the bottom layer is one, it's stitched around, the bottom layer is one and then that skinny little line with blue. So it's just two pieces, put it together, stick, stick, done. Very cool and I love the metallic, so fun. Love the background as well, great. And then a little set of cards. There again, remember when I talked about Celebrate, that yes, you can put everything together and you can make a party. You can really just go to town or you can take each element and you can focus on that. And that to me is super charming where Paula made this little set of cards. This is a stamped background. There you see that, that gift, it just says best wishes. So again, this could be for a shower, this could be for a wedding, anything. I love the idea of those label stickers too, because I think the boldness just really sets that apart. Then we have, look at that. Love, love, love that. So fun. Then we've got the, the cake, the candles, little metallic, little metallic on the bottom and the labels. And then we've got that party hat. And you can see here on the party hat, look at all those different layers. Remember when I talked about having the vertical stripes or having this little swirl, all of that is connected. So I don't want to disassemble this card, but under here, these blue stripes are connected by a strip of cardstock. So you're not having to stick down those pieces individually. It's one layer that adds those stripes. And then we've got, see how it kind of looks like a little magic wand or a sparkler. So I do love that. I love, love these cards. I love how, how cute these are with, with all of those stamp backgrounds, the little sparkles. We've got the hat, we've got the cake, we've got the wonderful gift. And I absolutely love just seeing uh, those, those crepe streamers just twisted around. Maybe I've called them confetti, but they're streamers um, twisted around, but super fun, fun way to celebrate. Great, great ideas and just a great variety to show how you can get uh, the use out of that set and that each of those elements is a standalone, even, even down to uh, the streamers themselves, those little twisted crepes. I think they're beautiful. Okay, moving on. So cute, right? Yeah, the sewing part. I know she could sew such a straight line. My gosh, mine looks like it's chewed up, but I know I step on the gas. <laughs> I do. <laughs> All right. So then we get into abstract elements and, and I'm going to tell you like abstract elements are just that they're just elements. You just do what you want with them. So we'll start with Sharon's cards. And this was really uh, a great play, especially if you're into uh, fodder school, which is a great online uh, education course of so many great techniques, but taking your pieces that you do and, and playing around with not only color and technique, but also shapes. So creating these backgrounds where you're just cutting out that set out of different colors of paper, you're taking some panels. So if you look here, these are just gray panels and you're just creating a collage, going off the edge, trimming it. Maybe you're using that, the rest of that on another one. And I like, I like the whole composition of these. This to me is really fun, really playful, a great use, not only for solid cardstock, but any of those backgrounds, take those backgrounds, take that inky stuff and cut it up. But if you're like, oh, I don't even know what to do with the pieces. Great. Give yourself a piece. Some people could work on a large piece and then cut it up. I can't really, I, I don't work that way because my mind kind of short circuit, but I'm really good about saying, okay, here's the panel. I'm going to start sticking these down make sure you go off the edge. To me, that gives it a bit more of an organic look to it. And then just trim off whatever's hanging off of the edge. But you can see how fun those are. Just use a, a stamped sentiment at the bottom. So it's just gray on a simple white with a stamped image, but clean and simple and oh, so freaking cool, right? So cool. Great use for the cards. And, and what I also love is that sometimes makers, when they're making, they get inspired to do their own thing. And so thank you, Sharon, for, for sending these in because she sent them to Paula. She's like, I made these just for me. They're not really for the live. And Paul's like, no, send them in for the live. She was so inspired to take all of her elements that she created earrings out of these pieces. So taking these different elements and you could have stamped pieces. You can go in with your collage medium over the top, punch out those little shapes and put them on large wire hoops and create wearable art. Sure, so, I know I love I love the whole stamp on the top. On top. Well, it's really cool. Hey, if you're going to present, present, right? No but how clever is that to take these shapes, especially so you can see in the background, I'll, I'll move this around. So see all that mixed media, you're stamping, you're inking pieces that Sharon has made. And that's what's great about these shapes. And if you coat them, I'm not sure what 
if she used collage medium on both sides, I'm just guessing because it kind of feels like that. But if you seal them with collage medium on both sides, even though it's paper, it's still going to make them uh, waterproof. But what a great idea. A couple of beads and they're just fabulous, right? It's such a clever idea. Such a clever idea to take all of your paper components and then utilize these shapes for wearable art. Brilliant, brilliant idea, Sharon. So thank you for agreeing to send those. It's cool. And art can be crazy. Art could be funky. Art could be fun. That's the whole power of a maker. So Susie created this and she's like, I, I kind of started, I didn't know where the idea was going. And then the idea just kind of went. Okay. Um, and this is where it took her and I love, love the whimsical craziness of this make. It starts out with these, these paper dolls. So you can see these are, these are just the, the large portrait elements that are just cut out. So it's a different scale of paper doll and ideology. So you've got those pieces. And then she took all of these abstract elements and just went to town, started dressing them up, made hats. You got the little eyes. I mean, these pieces become really unique. So for those that love mixed media, for those that love to, to work in, in an art journal and just create all sorts of pieces and you like to, to have photos in there, taking your photos, be that paper dolls or your own photos, and start dressing them up with all of these crazy whimsical shapes. It's fabulous. It's such a brilliant idea for this die. And that to me is, is what's so important about seeing the inspiration because the die is only the die, it's the design. It's, it's the power of the maker that brings a design into a card world or bring a design into even thinking of making jewelry or bringing a design uh, by going in and creating these uh, magical mystical people out of that. And I love how she connected it with, with just a little bit of, of mummy cloth and that heart. So it is like a Valentine. It's just a, a cool, quirky, artsy Valentine. But see, even down to these little pieces, you see this tiny little scalloped edge. That's one of the dies, that skinny little strip. So all these pieces that get glued and layered uh, make it really uh, a fun and playful set. That's what's great. And, and often those are the dies that don't stick around, really, because people look at it like, what would I do with it? But then if you have it and you're like, oh my gosh, I can just add this little piece or this little piece, or I can, I can layer these pieces to create it. Even if you're not doing jewelry, think of paper charms for your junk journal. Think of charms that hang off the end that are actually done out of paper. Great, really fun. Then we have a set of Valentines that Anita did, and she just went to town. Uh, this is what I was saying. Like once you kind of, once you go, your ideas are just going to go, go, go. So you can take, all of those pieces, there's that heart from true love and just start building on it. This kind of resembles a little bit of a face, right? With the eyes, the eyelashes, and you take all those pieces, add some metallic elements and just start sticking those pieces down. You can create a caricature of that. I love how Emporium is like the queen of hearts where you, you take all of those shapes. See, this is kind of that spin off of Pete where you know I think you really inspired people to take those elements. I love how she took that upside down kind of rainbow and made, made a flower, a little tulip out of that. Just fabulous, such a great idea. So cool. It's so cool. And then there is the outline of the heart from there because we already know from True Love, you get the solid and that skinny outline. But these are all just cards. So they're like playing card cards, if you will. You could do something a little bit more kind of folksy. You could even go in with this and, and add some stitching elements to it or some fasteners or brads. So, and I, I love the imagination of these where yeah, you can stick to one theme. You can be like, I'm, I'm going caricature. Or I'm just going to go kind of really cool uh, steampunk art, or I'm just going to make like these little flowers just out of circles. Super clever, super, super clever. Or just taking a repeat, whether you're doing all of those, those little borders where she went in with a little pen, added the dots, added that. And again, uh, color blocked that heart. And I liked, I liked seeing those because it's almost like those little letters are either on ribbons or little bouncy springs in my brain anyway, but super clever. So you look at that die set and you think, mm, it's a little, I don't know. But then you're like, wow, it could be pretty much anything you think of. And this is only the beginning. I'm telling you, when you're gonna see a lot of inspiration out there uh, coming because Pete's take on this was 100% Pete, total different departure and, and very cool and really fun. So I, I can't wait for you guys to, to continue to, to share and experience the, the sets because the sets, yeah, it's all about giving you the, the tools 
to let your imagination run wild. Wild. Very cool. Okay. Good. Moving on. We're doing good? Yep. Okay. I'm trying. I've got... Okay. <laughs> well, there's a lot of inspiration to, to go. So next we're going to get into the wood slices. And again, I think, okay, we're, we have a die. It pretty much tells you what it is. You know, it's going to be that that heart, that cut out, are there, is there going to be enough variety within the makers? I don't even know why I even say that to myself because of course there is. They're, they're makers. They're going to do their thing. So Sharon created this card. Here's what I love. This, this is colorized. Do you remember the colorized uh, wood grain that we did where you can actually create these planks out of colorized? That is her background. So it's beautiful that those are all paper cut pieces. So she built this colorized first. Then she cut out that heart out of that background and then inlaid this wonderful carve. So it's like the side of a tree. It's so, so cool um, to take that. So you could see the, the layers of that wood slice. There's that font C and P forever. And then I love the little hardware heads on there. Beautiful, great use of this because I love the whole idea of, of the inlay, but also, cause there's a lot of wood grain. There's 3D embossing folders, wood grain, cardstock, all of that but I love seeing it used on this, this inky colorized background. It's just so cool. Then we got a little thinger, a little, um, it's not, is it called a wobbler. jiggler? No, oh, yeah. I, was, I was gonna call it a jiggler, a wobbler. whatever, wobbler. Okay, well, you know, it's a thing, <laughs> it's, it's, a it's not a jiggler. <laughs> it's a um, wobbler. Okay, wi wi what? Wobbler. It's wobbler, see now I've got jiggler and wiggler, so it's wobbler. <laughs> It's a it's a action wobble or something like that. Joey's is a wobbler. It is. Everyone's gonna tell us it's an action wob wobbler. <laughs> this very fun <laughs> use of this die because we have the wood slice here. These leaves are from Blossom. So if you wanted to add that that bold nice scale, we've got these leaves from Blossom. And then the background, of course, that's gonna be that wood slice 3D folder that we launched last year. So a great way to again, mimic a different wood background that we can go from colorized, already done wood grain, or use your folders. And I really love how this just, it, it mimics that great texture. And yes, you don't have to always ink the die. If you ink the die, you're gonna get those deboss colors. But if you don't, it's strong enough that you are gonna see it. You're gonna see it no matter what, even with uh, the ink. But yeah, it's really fun. Fun card, and again, a whole different, that's what I was saying, a whole different spin or a whole different look uh, on what people, what people do with it. So Stacy created this. This is an etc. tag, okay? And I love that she gives me all the. <laughs> thanks, thanks so much. Wood slice ABC. Okay. Um, so what I really like again. So the background of this. So we we're working on etc. tag. So it's a little thicker. I need to show the mechanics a little bit. So the background. If you look at the texture of this, this is going to be the lumber 3D folder. That's very different. So these are just samples out. So this is, of course, the, the wood slice and oh, that's quilted. This is lumber. So it's more of, this is also a 3D folder. This is an older one, but see this creates those kind of plank wood grain uh, background. So that's what Stacy did on the tree. And I love this because she attached it, kind of tore it out, did a little stitching, but I love the moss that's coming through it. Like it's just growing through the tree. Then when she created this slice, she didn't put the words on there. You don't have to, that's just the heart. That could be almost like a, a beautiful knot hole growing in the tree. She put those letters down there and I love how she used the plus as like a small X. That's really clever. Cause you know, we got the XO, XO. She just used other pieces to get the different sizes. Cause that's, that's the big X and O. And this, this is probably maybe the top of, I don't know, maybe a P or something where she just cut it. So very clever to, to kind of create your own little alpha out of that but look at that nail, look at that rusty nail. So we've got a nail going into this because we've got that et cetera tag. So that is nailed to the tree. Beautiful, beautiful. And then you can see these little flowers. Well, that's, that's the whole brush stroke mini. Those tiny little flowers, you're gonna see them popping up on so many makes because the scale is beautiful. The fact that they really go with so many different styles. They go with an organic style. They go with a retro style because of just uh, the scale and how small those flowers are. But isn't that great? I love all this little mossy bit. A whole different spin on that. Whew, crazy, crazy, crazy. Then Vicky created this one and Vicky is the only maker I was actually messaging with her. So this font, you can use it to, to create a negative or create a cutout, but for the sake of packaging, 
it was much easier just to talk about sticking the letters on there. But you can actually stack those on layers and see how that's really cut out of this heart. So the you and me is not on the top. It's cut out of every single layer. It's a bit challenging to figure out. It's not an easy thing. Uh, but I already said to Vicky, I'm like, did I mention this or did you know? She's like, no, 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 I, I think I thought of it. She goes, but then again, you may have said it because I don't listen to you, but that's okay. I take no offense, Vicky. Um, but yes, you can use to cut it out. And she's going to do a tutorial on, on this as well uh, in, the, in the coming weeks about how she stacked those layers and literally cut out that font through every layer because it's not just cut out of the top. You can see it's cut out of many, many layers going in there. And then I love how she backed it on that mosaic background gives it a whole different vibe than the wood grain, doesn't it? So cool. And then we've got uh, those florals and these floral pieces, of course, abstract elements. So she created flowers using like those, I'll just call them eye, eye shapes. Uh, they're the leaves, they're the circles. So these bigger flowers, she just used that abstract element die of just taking these pieces and, and building what she wanted to go with, with her look. So just looking at these, because there's still another make, you can see stylistically how different they are. That's what I was saying. I wonder if they're going to look the same. No, it could be like full on just wood grain. There we go. It can have a, a different whimsical vibe with some bigger leaves. It can have an organic vibe with moss and tiny little brushstroke, or it can have, I always say, a bit more of an industrial vibe with, with Vicky uh, on those, that black metallic dark tiles that really carve thing and, and those funky those funky elements that you create with abstract. Those are all so cool. So cool. And then Tammy B is like, okay, stand back, because I'm just going to just do the ultimate Bam. Valentine. Yeah, which <laughs> I mean, that's it. So you could take an idea, and once you go, you go. So this is just a, a great large Valentine. This is a large etc. tag, by the way. That's the foundation for this. And, and I love that it says, you know, will you be mine forever? So this is just, this is a Valentine that you can display, and I love it. I love the background how she created uh, the repetition with the mosaic. And then she just took the wood slices. And it's a good thing because these are all hearts. So we got someone that used a circle and then a heart there. So um, I love the details that were added that Tammy did creating all of these slices. Then you can see the little florals that pop in. These are all those mini brush strokes, the bold colors. And I like how just everything is staggered. So it, it does read as a, a wonderful Valentine and that's, that's really great. Look at the little tack nails. So these are the ideology tack nails. It's great. Again, two different makers with an idea of taking uh, an et cetera tag and using nails to actually nail it in because this is a paperboard. So it does allow you to, to attach things, but how brilliant is that? So even if you took one of those ideas, you're like, okay, I'm just going to do like that one slice. Perfect. Because the slice of wood, you see, it doesn't have to ever have any words on it. It doesn't have to at all. It could just be, it could just be this. Brilliant. I love it. So that is inspiration for wood slice. And you could see that there's a lot of different styles that you can go and take and, and play and create using the words, using flowers, or just using it as, as an accent. Nothing. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. See, there you go. Okay. Mario's standing by. Thank Thanks, that. Mario. You're welcome. Yeah, he's already here. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Next, we're going to talk some, I'm going to talk some true love. I was going to go to flowers, but I really want to, to share these makes because they're just, they're beautiful, beautiful, true love. So Anita created this. This is where you're going to see these pieces, these elements of this die set used many different ways. Okay. The important thing to understand about any die set, you don't have to make it like the packaging. And I know you're probably rolling your eyes going, yeah, I know that. But some people kind of need that permission out loud. It doesn't have to look like the package. It's just the elements to show you uh, what can be made with it. So I love how Anita created the box, put the lid a little off to the side and have not only some candy pieces, but one, yep, I was there, just one with a bite taken out of it. That's just great. And she's always very witty with her, her words, how she just, she took that Emporium and then used some of, it could be chit chat, could be small talk, or you could just type these uh, on your own. So you're a sweet Valentine, but well, I love you. See that? But well, yeah, you're sweet, but you weren't going to get the full box of chocolates. I needed to sample a few first just to make sure they were all okay. But I love this as well from Snarky. I could give up chocolate, but I'm not a quitter. That's right. And you can see on the top how she added a little, little sparkle to the top of that icing on the chocolates. 
depending on how you finish the cardstock, you can also use microglaze over the top and that could give the cardstock a sheen. You could use resist spray. Uh, you, there's a lot of things that you can do and change. And you can see on hers, she used that white as her paper wrap to really make those pieces stand out as well. There's no right or wrong way to, to work with chocolate. I'll tell you that, Anita, it's just, it's beautiful. Then Debbie Adams created this card. Now I worked with Debbie um, back in the day, we used to work together at Sizzix and, and she was just like this creative force that I think uh, opened my eyes to what could be done with dyes and vintage elements, but more importantly, how the power of a shape. When I say the power of a shape, I, I would have to say that I learned that from, from seeing Debbie's work and being inspired by it. Because when I show you how much stuff is in here, you're gonna be like, what? Okay, first of all, it's just a beautiful, gorgeous Valentine, correct? Yes. yes. Let's break it down. Background, 3D folder, that is going to be dotted or multi-level is, is dotted. Then if you look here, can you see Blossom coming in? Blossom, those are Blossom pieces. Remember I talked about it being perspective? So there's some Blossom elements. Then if you just use that, that inside and kind of raise it up, it can also give you kind of a little of a splat look, which is great. You can take any of the elements. So this is of course Emporium. You can take the Emporium piece. And then when we have those mini brush strokes, I love how some of it's white, some of it's colored. But what Debbie did for the True Love box is she just used the edge of the box and that top highlight offset. So she didn't use the base of it, she didn't use the solid piece because leaving it open allowed you to see all of those other layers. Just a very clever way to use all of these pieces. Just cutting that up and using it and not adding any color, but adding color to your top layer. That's what, that to me is, is like the mind blowing part of it. Sometimes we just think a background needs to be like ink or, or paint or smush and we don't think of texture or that the background needs to be color. Well, maybe not. The background could be crazy texture and then all of your colored elements are just amazing. So that's what I always find very interesting. I know that she's gonna take a design and she's gonna do what it's never intended to do. And that is, that's brilliance right there. Then we have a wonderful little set of Valentines that Kath made. Kath just so many sweet ideas, right? So many sweet ideas. So, and I love that it's a different color palette, like pinky cute. So you can take something from chapter three. So here she used that multi-level just to create those dots. Great background, even for Valentine's and then die cut out this, this little envelope with the little string. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to open it. Sometimes I'm supposed to, sometimes I'm not. I don't know, am I supposed to? Yeah. Okay, well I'm not. Unless I see in the chat like, yes, open, but no. Um, so you can take that little envelope, but look at the, look oh, at the yeah. front. I love the cutout of this. So here she used the negative cutout of Emporium. You've got those pieces. So she just inlaid those highlights right there and just created those chocolate pieces. So when I said, you don't always have to use the box as the box, you don't always have to fill the box and you don't even need to use the big heart box. You can just use little pieces of chocolates. So I love that, my sweet love. Then we have bulletin. So you just have B and then my Valentine with the words. There is entangled in the background. So you see how beautiful and kind of swirly, swishy that background is, especially if it's inked. So pretty. And then more chocolate pieces. So I like how those chocolate pieces just frame that. Once you start making chocolates too, you're like a little chocolatier. You're going to sit there and just start making, making. And I also love the play of colors. Everyone's using totally different color palettes. I love the, the, the shades of brown and the, the whites and pinks on this. And then she really went, so we've got love is sharing. So we've got a beautiful heart. So there's the top of that box that again, she embossed with uh, entangled. You can see, isn't that beautiful? It's such a beautiful folder. Even with ink, it's just, it picks up so much detail. Then she took this. So I'm guessing this is from there was a die that I did. I think there were like lace trims or something. And I think Kath actually like cut this apart because it's not in the shape of a heart, but she certainly did. But take a look at this. What? So there you go. Love is sharing a box of chocks. So cool right there. I would just, awesome. I would just take this piece right here. How fabulous is that to just do an open box of chocolates that way uh, as a card? That's a crochet. Just all those there. Crochet. Thank you. See, I don't know, but that's a lot of work, Kath, because all these pieces, it's just stunning how you cut that up and created 
uh, this beautiful uh, doily around that. Beautiful, right? But look at all those chocolates. So I mean, you can only imagine how many cats must have just been just chocolate, chocolate making because you've got all those pieces. But they're really not, once again, compartmental making. Once you find your groove, you're like, just sit and make chocolates. So you have a whole bunch of chocolates to use. Don't say, oh, I'm going to make this. I'm going to do the card and the background and the bulletin and chocolate. Just sit and make chocolates. Sit and cut hearts. Sit and do some embossing. And then you're going to have all those elements that you can put some, some great makes together and, and create something uh, really, really beautiful. I love the Valentines. This one, though, I have to say, blew my mind that I, 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 I <laughs> yes, good. I'm guilty of it. And when, when you find out about it, I think there's going to be many makers out there, especially if you've been making for many years, you are going to roll your eyes in a minute. So you better just buckle up, buttercup. This Stacy made, it's an et cetera tag, using true love in the most vintage way possible. So as you can see, clearly, this has a very whimsical, playful vibe. That was its design, the chocolates. But remember where I talked about these elements, do not underestimate the power of a shape. Yes, it could be playful and whimsical. Yes, it could be more romantic and, and pretty, especially if you don't use any pieces. So Debbie didn't use any chocolate, Stacy didn't use any chocolate, but what she did is she created a chocolate box. What? So when I saw this and when Paula saw this, this, first of all, the et cetera tag itself is beautiful. I don't want to take away from how much work went into the sewing of the paper. Take a look at all of these beautiful uh, mini watercolors, just kind of this swag of, of pretty flowers and all of these threads and fibers and the little stitched buttons and the little bits of, of kind of gauze in there, but it's really just linen that's just been shredded apart. We've got some great embossing glaze. You see that, that rusted enamel? I mean, there's so much texture and detail just in the background even down to that little number tag right there. But the showstopper was the box because besides that we have this metallic cardstock. So look at, because you know, if you got a box of chocolates, it's usually out of that wonderful metallic foiled paper, ideology craft stock in red. We've got the photo booth that just says love greatly. I mean, just the tiniest details. Then we've got that ribbon, the seam binding ribbon and crinkle, but it was this and I'm like, because it's metallic. So I said to Paula, is this a tart tin? Is it whatever? She's like, you know what? I got to find out. I'm like, I got to find out. So I, I messaged Stacy. I'm like, what is this? What did you use? Are you ready? Ideology, metallic craft stock and a paper crimper. Man. You guys remember those <laughs> way back in the day, paper crimper, that little thing, that big giant roller that you would take paper, you put it in and you do this and it, it crimps it. It kind of creates corrugated. I didn't have one. I used to have one but I didn't crimp paper for a bazillion years since my Ben Franklin days. So I reached out, I was like, oh my gosh, I had to look. So I went on Simon Says, I'm like, oh my God, oh my God. Cause paper crimper is like, oh God, oh God, I needed to get oh one and, and all of it was popping up was like eBay. Cause I don't, uh, anyway, uh, I, got, I got one at Simon um, and I'm so happy that I did because I think that any of, any of you that have a paper crimper are like, that is really brilliant just to create that raised box. But if you don't, you might be like me going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I need. Well, I'm just telling you, that's really smart. Yeah, most people have had it. You had it for years. I just, I didn't. So it, it does go to show like this is, this is that one validation moment that if you were just one of those craft keepers, the hoarder, if you will, that's why you have it. Me, on the other hand, I am, I'm a purger. I'm like, I don't need that. What goes around comes around. So but absolutely fabulous make to create that box. And, and I did ask if she would be doing a tutorial and Stacy said yes. So thank you, Stacy, for creating that. But, but really looking at these, all of these ideas are brilliant, brilliant with true love. So even though that package is just a box of chocolates, it's saying, right, I'm gonna just actually make a box. And I remember them being, and she stamped and embossed. So you can see that, that detail stamping on there. I'm gonna actually make a box. I'm gonna make almost like a, an invisible or transparent box where you understand it's a box, but you're gonna see so much beauty out of that. I'm gonna make a box that I went into and ate, brilliant, that Nita did. And I'm gonna show you from the box and think outside the box, literally create uh, that hinge box of chocolates and playing on that, but then using the chocolates by themselves. So I think the inspiration of the makers in these lives are just, it's top notch. Cause you see it and you're like, 
wow, you know, I, I didn't think I wanted that because I don't know, I'm not going to do the chocolates. Okay, but those hearts are beautiful. I just want to make that. And I want those pieces because you have enough pieces to do the base and the top or, hey, I just like the chocolates and I'm going to use them for other things. You know, maybe you make chocolates. I don't know. I just think it's brilliant because I think this is also going to be very cute at Christmas, especially for people that like to make candies or buy truffles or buy boxes of chocolates for, for gifts. This die is going to come in handy. You may not want to use all the, the heart part of it, but I think that it's going to be very, very it's cute. Beautiful. Just wonderful. So many different okay. Ideas. I know, but my gosh, I'm not lying when I say that candy is calling my name right now. Yeah. My stomach is starting <laughs> to eat itself because I'm like, oh my gosh, give me candy. Okay. That, yeah. That'll be the reward at the end of the slide. I won't rush it for the candy, guys, but I'm telling really, you, man, my, my, my brain is going there. Yeah, we actually got... We got a seize. We got a seize <laughs> in Prescott, Arizona. I, like, that is like a dream come true for me. You have no idea. No more shipping. Because I buy C's online all the time. You've heard my tales. They opened one just before Christmas, and I couldn't be happier. And yes, we've been in there already shopping. And yes, we will be going many times. Okay, <laughs> let's get into some other makes. Uh, this one we're going to focus, and you've seen a lot of a lot of this dye on other things, but but these makes really highlighted uh, the dyes in a different way. So that's why I wanted to talk about it. I'll start with I'll start with this one because uh, Zoe created this one, uh, Zoe Scarpelli, using the the mini brushstroke in a very grunge or vintage way. So she took those those frame tags a lot of great grime and and rust on here and almost created this little triptych i mean it is flat but i suppose you know if you had these flat you could build it and sand it up the idea is very very clever creating a matchbox frame with the photo booth in there little ideology clip but then just adding these flowers throughout we like that the the flowers are the same color so again you can mix those flowers in with vintage grunge sometimes you look at florals and think yeah but i'm a vintage i'm a grunge person I'm telling you, the style of this Brushstroke Mini, well, if you haven't seen it so far, it just crosses over to everything. It could be anything that you want it to be because the shapes uh, have a just a very, well, Brushstroke look. That is what makes it so cool. And I love these elements that Zoe created. I love the little uh, addition of, of the snaps and the clips and the buttons and uh, the quote chips and the key, little lucky. But what a great piece, just a wonderful, and I love the texture, of course, the texture grime and rust of that little stitching elements mm. very cool with the flowers then keisha created this card love all the colors first we can look at the background that background is oh gosh i'm gonna say it's woven i could be wrong but this was a 3d folder that we did of that that wonderful woven background perfect for that i love that she stamped first so that's part of that woven look that's such a clever look isn't it i don't know if i've seen somebody stamp and then emboss it because it's it's just beautiful but love that touch of color keisha i love the the rainbowness we can always count on her to do something colorful and very clean and just isn't that beautiful but see when you sit down and maybe you've maybe you've looked on social and seen people how they've just been creating flowers and i've even shared some of those posts uh in the story which by the way if you're not uh, following instagram stories especially right before live you guys are missing out on a ton of inspiration. I think I've shared inspiration for like five days yeah, straight yeah. in the story. So if you're not on Instagram, you know, you're missing that because anybody that's prepping, making, uh, have made, I really like to share because I think the inspiration needs to be shared everywhere. And I've seen people that just literally have a pile of flowers where they're like, I'm just making flowers or someone that's like, I'm making chocolates. That to me is what's so great about this is that when you do that, you can make them out of all different colors and then have this beautiful build on this card. And I love that little ideology metallic. You are loved. Beautiful card, isn't it? So amazing. All right. I need to grab this real quick, Mario. Okay. Give me, let me shuffle that around and give you some room. All right. There Cause, you go. Yeah, because these, these are glass. So I just want to be very careful. They came, they came special. So Debbie created these, Debbie Adams. And this is when I was talking about seeing the brushstroke floral. And she included a note, because otherwise I probably wouldn't have known. But she took the idea, the brushstroke flower die, but actually made it look like a painting. So these are the die cuts. I'll show you that. They are the die cuts. But she went in and hand watercolored each one. This one she put on kind of this linen-y background to mimic stitching because she said that this reminded her, I mean, she put them in these beautiful glass frames, these kind of pressed glass frames,
but she said that this reminded her of like embroidered, ribbon embroidered or stitched florals. So that's why she put that on the, I mean, how clever is that, right? Just taking those colors and layering that just on that fabric and putting it under glass and it just looks like beautiful stitching. Then the same, I know, vintage lovers are like losing their mind right now because just the coloring. So that's just taking the pieces, building the pieces white, building it all up and then going in and coloring. Then you know where to add your highlights and lowlights and shadows. Then she did another one that mimics pressed flowers. So that's just keeping it on the glass. But then by doing all of that painting work just inside the glass, then you have this, this pressed floral. Isn't that wild that it's a die cut? Come on. So clever to use this in a different way. And there's, you know, for those that have, you know, microscope side glass, or, or you can just find glass frames or put it in a, a picture frame. I think the idea of taking this style, and this is what I was saying about this die, stylistically, it morphs depending on what you put it on. It could have a whimsy vibe, it could have an industrial vibe, and it can have the most sophisticated vibe depending on how you create that. So I think having that in the background, I think someone said, yeah, this is Ada cloth in the back. Yes, that's the stitching, and then this is just uh, glass. But both are done out of paper and layered. So yeah, that's just absolutely stunning. A beautiful use of that. And like I said, you've seen those flowers used on, on previous makes that are so uh, incredible, but these makers really highlighted that flower. That was the highlight of the make. So uh, just unbelievable. I love all of that. I mean, just, you just want to make flowers. You do. And the style. So it's one of those that you really want to allow yourself that, that play time. So beautiful. Then we're going to get into some blossom. So Paula created this etc. tag. We've got a really wonderful big tag. And what's nice again about having dies that are not only small like the first one, but also really big, is that it can just be the make. So pair that with bulletin, so you've got bloom. This is a great thing that could uh, sit on someone's desk. You can put it in the center of a wreath. It can sit on a mantle. Uh, it could be clipped and hung on the wall. This is a little ideology clip. But it's a great thing uh, for spring, if you wanna do spring decor. But here you can see that she used, ah, uh, love that little bit of glaze on there. That's what's giving it that nice shine and reflection. I like that she curved this up a little bit. So if you have the, the Sizzix shaping kit, you can take that stylus and just give this just that nice subtle curve all the way around. Then you've got the leaves down here. And again, this could be done with resist spray. You can use your mica stains. If you have your mica stains, I love the bit of metallic as the outline because see it just really catches the light. And then just a little bit of, of mummy cloth that's just shredded. That's why people stock up on mummy cloth every Halloween comes out once a year, but this is when you see all this little, yeah, it should have been called Oh My Gauze, I'm telling you, but this little Lucy gauze stuff, that's just mummy cloth just tucked in. Beautiful, great make for Bloom. <clears throat> then as I mentioned, uh, Jeanette was just like, I just love this flower. And Jeanette is like mixed media, and and I think we've we found a place that she celebrates that. I know when uh, she first came on as a maker, you know, she just, she's mixed media, and that's why we, we really reached out to her the same way, you know, Natifa with her envelope. When people have their style, they do. And then sometimes a maker will come in and think like, wait a minute, but I don't make anything like Tammy or Stacey or this. I better try that style. And it was like, no, 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 no. You, you do you. you. And it's, it was so great when I got these cards because I'm like, there it is. There it is. It's someone who thrives on mixed media backgrounds, paints, textures, gesso, sparkles, rub-ons, sky's the limit in the mixed media world, um, handwriting, anything, and using a die that way. So she created this, this series of cards. And yes, this, this is a card. She did cards. It, it's much easier for me to, to hold a card than a journal page, but this could also be uh, an art journal. So I just think that, that what Jeanette did with these pieces, look at these elements. So we've got just these could be, maybe these are gel prints, some stamping in there. Now we've got the die. There's some mica flakes in there. There's a button there. You can see it's just, it's all sorts of crazy cool background, black cardstock, sparkly glitter cardstock. That's what I'm saying with mixed media, you know, the sky's the limit. There's some stitching, little tiny attacher that goes off the edge and boom, chop, done. See ya. Next idea, totally different background, totally different idea. Let's take another print. Let's add some remnant rubs there. Let's do some rub-ons. 
some metallic cardstock, another printed layer, and just create however you want to create. And this whole thing, I'm sure this, you know, maybe started out as the same background, but then you just start cutting it up. And look at this brilliant idea. The centers, when you cut out blossom, when you get into this middle layer, do you see the negative of this top layer? It's a very cool, weird shape, but it's the leftover. Look at what she used for the, with the leftovers. They're like these crazy cool splats because that's just the leftover. That's the negative part of a blossom that you don't see in the build and how she added just all sorts of little uh, paper. So this could have been from the abstract element stitched on. You've got circles in there. Again, you've got more rub-ons. You've got a little blingity bit, that little charm on that bee. But how fabulous is that of seeing a dye that has a very beautiful, clean look and create beautiful mixed media with that very same shape. That is the power of a shape. And so I'm so, I always love it when, when a maker just becomes comfortable in, in who they are. And, and I understand the pressure, you know. I mean, I don't understand it, but I, I try to, to understand it because it, it's really about celebrating who, who you are as a maker and never apologizing for your art or your style. You just do it. I just think it, it's so cool, so fabulous. Then Susie created this card. I love the look of this. I love, and, and she messaged me, she goes, I think I was feeling green because both of my makes are green. They're beautiful colors though. You can see those wonderful backgrounds. I love how she shaped that blossom on there and just use that as a focal point with uh, the background of those mosaics. And I love the finish and color of this. Yes, this is a great card, but it could also just be a framed piece where you've got Cultivate Kindness, another spring make, but a completely different Look, this is kind of like somewhere in the middle of, of, of a vintage vibe and something uh, in the mix of a mixed media. But I love how she even left the inside parts of that flower loose and open and kind of curved that and shaped it so it really created a beautiful dimensional look. So Susie is just very cool. And then this one, this isn't Blossom, but this was kind of on the tail of this because I really loved how, uh, this is a card Kubera did, but I love how she used this background, this mosaic, in a rainbow way. Yes, because, yeah, it has a very organic look, stone, tile, uh, even steampunk. But to see it with a rainbow, this is fabulous. Love that. It's just like a, an ink background. And this, is, this looks like crackle to me. I'm not really sure. But, well, I see crackle, but this looks like it's uh, like the clear crackle paint. And then I'm not sure if it was alcohol linked over the top. I don't know, but I, I really hope there's a tutorial on this because this is just... It's fabulous to me because you look at that. Look at all that crackle like shattered glass, but it's all colorful. And then she created that mosaic background and then you got that, that grimy grunge inside. Okay, so far so, well maybe she's gonna do tutorials. So I wanna watch it because like it's, it's pretty fabulous. Uh, it's really it was stunning. Alcohol. But was the alcohol ink on the crackle or under the crackle? I don't know. We'll find out. And then we have Emporium. I know we're getting it like, we, uh, we're I'm like really cracking the code. Sure. But it's beautiful. I mean, when I saw that, I'm like, I just need to put that in because when you see it one after the other, I, I really, I never saw that shape um, as like something for rainbow. I always really thought of it as something uh, organic as an element. But now when I see this, I love the pattern because now all I see are circles, right? I see just those rings of, of little mosaic tiles. And yeah, it's just so cool. I get alcohol ink under and crackle paint on top. Oh, fabulous. Thanks, Just beautiful. Kubera. Thanks, Kubera. Uh, but see, again, the power of a maker, taking something and taking us on an adventure that we didn't know we were going. That is what it's all about. It's, it's just so cool. But they do them where they're like, oh, this is what I'm doing. And you, you, have to, you have to be that way. I think as a maker, you have to just, you can be inspired, but you've got to just do that whole, you got to do that whole thing. Okay. So next we're going to do we're going to do a little bunny. There's a lot of bunnies. I can tell that the makers like the bunny because we got, we got some, ooh, some bunny inspiration. And that's good. So we're going to talk about bunny stitch and just the cute makes that, that were created. And I love this. So Tifa made this. And, and when I saw it, I'm like, what? Tifa? It, it's so cute and so wonderful. But then I totally get that it's also her style because she created an envelope out of that. But I love how she uh, utilized just a, a wonderful paper, just all those little snips of paper created this. I love how this bunny is cut out of, of a pattern paper. This is like resist paper. This, this looks like craft stock resist. This looks like old ideology resist paper. I don't know, I could be wrong. But 
Um, beautiful, and I love the, the bulletin with those little stitches. Remember when I said those X's, you're gonna start putting them everywhere, the little stitches right there. There's a little heart. But then when you open it, you've got that. She, I love the little Velcro. Why? Because inside, look at the details she did with the abstract elements. Yep. 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 It's, so you're right. Yeah. It's, Thanks, Steve. I, I love it. I love these little abstract elements inside. That's that wonderful surprise because this, this envelope is really about showing that you can do bunnies for Valentine's. It's not just for Easter because she created this wonderful little banner inside this envelope. So when you take this out... Let me just kind of lay this out. Look at how freaking cute this is that went inside. Okay, get it together, Holtz. There we go. There we go. There we go. All of that in this charming little envelope. Very cute. There. I know, right? Super clever to take bulletin and create that little banner. What a great Valentine to send someone. It's so cute to take those papers, take that string and just, just make that. And again, having those bold letters, there's so many things you can do with it, but you're also, it's the gift. You're just gifting them that. And this background, this, this heart was really the layered piece of that stitch one. See, cause remember they have that solid and that top layer. Remember when I said, don't forget that that solid is a great shape. And that's that, that solid heart is just the background heart from that bunny stitch. It's a beautiful, beautiful make. And I love even the details that, you know, she puts on the back, the little rubs, heart story, hello, beautiful, love you, XOXO, the sweetest thing, missing you, be true and happy together. But so even that little detail of, of doing that and taking some little uh, ideology, this looks like memoranda, just beautiful. I love it. It's a great make. And yes, that whole little surprise, you know, I'm not going to try to put that in during live, but it fits in that little envelope. Great, the, but that's such a happy surprise. I always believe that. I learned that when I took a class uh, from Judy Ross back in the day. Judy Ross, my muse, the one that gave me my start, I will say. Um, and she always said, so many times when we're making cards and we're doing backgrounds, we're so worried about the front. That's it. She goes, but what do people do when they get a card? You open it. So as beautiful as the front is, the last thing they see is really is when they open it. That's what they want to see. They want to see what was written in there, what is the sentiment? She said, so the inside always needs to be as beautiful as the outside. And I remember that. So when, whenever I do a background or something on the front of a card, it didn't matter what I made. I always made sure to cut off some of that background and put a little piece of that on the inside. So it kind of tied it together. I never forgot that. It was really interesting uh, to remember that. And that, that right there is just is proof of that detail. Wonderful. All right. So Keisha created this little wall hanging. How sweet is that? Now this, this is bunny stitch and this is cut out of felt. So look at how cute that is. Just that soft, fluffy felt from the little bunny, the carrot. I love the color where it just says so loved. Even this is cut out of felt, which Keisha, that surprised me. That, <laughs> that's Emporium cut out of felt. That little heart right there. And then you can see the entangled background and how beautiful that is for spring. Cause it's got just that little bit of inking over the top and then this panel is also felt, it's a very tactile make. It's beautiful, just soft and fuzzy. But look at all those layers of felt cut with a thinlet. So yes, you can cut felt with thinlets. As long as you have a good machine, cutting pads, all that, you, you're good to go. But that one impressed me, because I'm like, well, besides that, like, how did you even get that out without shredding this to bits? And maybe, maybe you went through a few before you did, but I, I absolutely love the make, and I love how she used the heart as the O in loved for so loved. Cute, so this could be, again, for a baby's room. So sweet, just to hang that as a, a wall hanging. I think it, it's absolutely magical when you see the idea uh, behind things. Can I have that envelope back? Mm -hmm. Thanks. Mario was like putting it away. I'm like, no, 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 you take it away. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he got it in there. Look at him, he's good with that. So then the bunny, I, I mean, I'm, I say I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised because it's Vicky after all. And Vicki Evans is like, yeah, okay, great. I'll, I'll take the bunny, which surprised me that she even wanted the bunny, but then I see it. So she went in with bunny stitch just to use the top and then used the hat uh, and the collar from Tailored and then used Emporium for Tada and then used that multi-level dotted. And now she did a little rabbit coming out of a hat. How freaking cute is that? And this is what I was saying about the color inlay. So when you cut this top layer, 
the pieces fall out. But if you cut it again, you can actually take that negative and put it back in. So here she cut the, the rabbit out of white, but then cut just those areas again out of pink, put the negative pink back in and the negative black back in. So it's very cute. But isn't that just, I love how he scaled to come out of that hat and then she just kind of followed those stitching going down to kind of give it that same look and feel, the little magician. And I just love, ta-da, I do, ta-da. Absolutely fabulous and brilliant. You see, we're only in three makes. And if you don't even see just the potential of, of a rabbit, this is what I was saying. You can tell when I even introduced it, I'm like, hmm, okay, okay. That's just so, so cool. Yeah, I agree, P, look how frayed it is on the edges. Paul's like, I love how he's frayed. Because it makes him just kind of look a little, well, a little tattered, a little floppy. So cute. I know, that's one of those, it's like, I want to keep that, but. <sighs> All right. Barbara created this really sweet garden. I love seeing just the bunny with the carrots and then she's got this whole little stack of, of carrots. Here she used the wood slice and kind of chopped it off to make it more of like a barrel with all the, the carrots coming out. You've got little cloud, little stitches throughout, little inking and just that, that grassy background. But very clever uh, in, in doing these carrots out of wood grain. Isn't that cute? Because I love seeing all those lines in there in the carrots and I thought that is a great use for wood grain just using the orange because it does it gives it uh, much more of a not only a homespun feel but it gives those carrots a great texture but i love how bright and cheerful and happy the colors are so so cute barbara i know cute cute and zoe scarpelli she created this this is an etc tag uh, just using a large etc tag this is a bunch of ideology paper in the back but the die is the star right here this is our our stitched bunny and you can see just layered a little bit of grunge little little oxide in there to create something vintage and then i was imagined first i know many of you uh, talked about the velveteen rabbit so just seeing that that a shape could also take you on a story and how you layer that and what you pair it with but again the vintage style so when you think about this as as the maker it's like okay i'm going to pair this with vintage i'm going to stick with colors i'm going to go grunge i'm going to do uh clean, bright, cheerful. Hey, I'm going to take something and just reimagine it into something totally different. That is really important. So Zoe's etc. tag, I think is just showing even from scale that you can still use that. And this of course is the font from uh, wood slice, right? Adding that again, you could, you could even do this to where it's more stitched, where you can take that stitching and you could add little X's to here. So it gives it the, the effect that this was stitched on many, many ideas when, uh, when you're creating it. So yeah, uh, Zoe Scarpelli created that one. Then we will get into, now we even have some dimensional makes. I always get excited when we have like some ideology vignettes and things, okay? Cause there, there are so many elements. So this one is an ideology uh, divided drawer that Jan created using the bunnies. But before we really get on, on the inside, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start on the inside because this is where I'm at, so I'll keep it. Um, so I love how she used the etc trims to kind of frame this box and give it because this will stand up but there we have the ideology barrel and she planted some carrots in the dirt there's she made a little faux dirt so so clever then she's got the bunnies i love how she just kind of bent up the the little bunny paws and put the carrots in there this one's pulling out carrots for this one in the back you can see some of those mini brushstroke flowers and how it just kind of grows just makes a a wonderful little little garden then we've got the ideology metal gates. Then you've got this guy up here. He's hiding eggs. It's like little hiding Easter eggs. They're getting carrots. He's had, it's like such, has such a wonderful uh, spring story to it. So cute, Jan, with, with all of those, those little hidden elements. And then we've got spring is in the air. And the make is absolutely fabulous. But where do you see the detail of this? Like, what? What? Yeah, this is where when you see that, and you're like, okay, the box is beautiful. The inside, Jan, not taken away. It's amazing. But the outside, like, it took my breath away because I saw this and I'm like, oh my gosh. Look at that. And it's not a repeat pattern, but I love how she kind of took that seam and just made it look like a repeat pattern. But it, it has that, that sheen on the top, that dark brown debossed. And that is just, whoo, fabulous fabulous detail of an already beautiful box. I mean, just this panel, like I would want that on a wall, right? Just seeing that, 
that design by debossing that color, that brown, and then highlighting the top. It's just, it's stunning. This looks like, I don't know, it looks like mica stain to me, but I don't know how she would have done just that. I don't know. I don't, It's but it's beautiful, right? Because that kind of looks like merriment to me because it's got a little bit of a sheen, but that would have been like, she painted it on. Maybe she did. That is some patience. I don't, and a steady hand. I don't know, but it's absolutely stunning. Beautiful, beautiful make, Jan. So, and, and really a lot of these makers uh, do share how they did it. Some, some on Instagram, some on YouTube, some on a blog. Uh, so you can always, you know, hope if you follow the makers that you can get a little bit more, a uh, little in-depth into, into that. Okay. Then we have this make that, that Kathy did, Kathy Cowles, and it's, it's a big one. So we start here. It's a wonderful story. It uses the ideology vignette tray and the ideology vignette box. So you can see here that we've got April showers and I love all of those bunnies. How cute where they're all kind of bundled up because April showers, there's a little umbrella that's from a stamp set. And I just love all the little vignettes, how they got a little bit of crackle in there because she used the backdrop crackle as the paper inside and then use a little crackle paste on the outside but it gets better because it's all in the details for the makers. So April showers, oh, you know it, bring May flowers. And you flip it around and it's all colorful and fun and whimsy. And now we've got those, those bunnies that have hats. Those are hats from uh, the crazy set, crazy things. Those stamped hats, carrots, little flowers everywhere. You see the entangled background with that color some frames you got some carrots and some other flowers in there and look at that little the little seed pack with the carrots but i mean how so that's kind of the overview so you can see and there's a little ideology knob that could if this was on a table you can just actually turn it isn't that just come on really seriously cool. i mean that was a lot of work too just hey. april showers flip it over bring may flowers but even even from the top it's just so amazing, Kathy. Just, I love it. I just, I love, I, this is what I love about lives. And honestly, I don't look at these. I don't, I say it every time and people are like, oh, come on. I know what they are because I've separated them, but I don't really look into the detail until it's like this face because I'm really looking through my phone. It's almost like a magnifier. Um, but it's just, it's a very clever way that people could take a shape when you see bunny stitch and imagine it so many different ways, right? That's just, that's fun. Okay. That's it is. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, what can I say? I'm just going to move these because I've got, we're in the home stretch, guys. We are, we are. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Okay. So next we're going to get into Paper Cut Cafe and such cute makes. Uh, these next few, just the ideas, there's not a ton of makes for each of the die set, but the makes really pack a punch. So we'll start with this one that Kath did. I mean, come on, Kath, yeah, really? A clock, a working clock, by the way. So yes, she made a clock, tea or coffee. So tea o'clock or coffee o'clock, brilliant. So that's using the outline of bulletin. We've got this great patchwork of paper in the background. I love how she also cut it out of cork. And then you can see here all of these wonderful little cups, all the little coffee and tea cups. I love how she added those little hearts. That looks from, uh, looks like from the little, uh, falling heart background die that I did. Those are really cute hearts. Then we have these, and I love how she, again, kind of inlaid that into the cork for little coasters. So tea for two or hug in a mug. Just isn't that charming? Come on. It's so cute. It's such a great idea. Whether you do the clock or whether you do this or, again, a great gift creating for someone, it's Kath. It's so cute. Cause I'm like a clock, like a, like a real big clock and just the coasters and the detail of the background and how these are, see how you can see how that's like inset into that cork and then it's sealed a little collage medium over the top and the cups, but I do love it. Absolutely amazing. Tea for two and hugging a mug. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. So, so good. Yep. And this next make, like, I'm not surprised. I, well, I would have been surprised if I didn't see it, but I'm, I'm glad that <laughs> that she did. So Tammy B created this. We know uh, Tammy, Tea Time, just, it's absolutely, it's just that. It's the whole idea of, of creating things with T 
tea. And it's so interesting that two makers, two totally different makers made really big elements with those small dies. And I just think it goes to show of what it could, what it can really showcase. But take a look at the detail up close. Each one of these is on a different type of tea bag. I mean, seriously, the texture, the staining, what's in it, fabulous. And not only that, I'm gonna, I'll just keep calling out all the details, but we've got these cups and saucers. Then you have those mini brush stroke watercolor, all those little flowers coming out of there. Then you have all these little scallop trim pieces from abstract elements. Then you have bulletin. Then you have entangled in the background. What? See? So at first you're like, oh yeah, cute make. And then when you really look into it, like, cause I really, I didn't even notice these until I set it down right now, honestly. Then I picked it up and like, I can pretty much think of my feet so I can identify it pretty quick. But all of these, just using the different types of tea bags on the back is so, I just love the texture and staining of those. Absolutely fabulous. Ooh, that's some schmancy tea. That's like fabric. Oof. Uh, but beautiful. I love that. And I love that these are all inks so of the papers. You know, you could use colored cardstock, absolutely. But if you're an inker, inking your own paper is great, especially if you have a variety of different colors of ink because you can get the perfect shade, the perfect tone. But I love how some of these have the tea and many of these have all those little flowers because they are scaled perfectly. That was by design for those little flowers to fit specifically uh, this die set of that paper cut. So beautiful, isn't it? Kath and Tammy B. Yeah, it's like two makes and it's like, yes, that's need anymore. There's, there are a couple more, of course. So, Michael okay. Sikos. Yes, thank you. Tea or coffee or clock? Almost. Coffee. <laughs> All right. So on the back of that, Juliana created this one. And I love how she took the cups and paired it with our next one, which of course are the gentlemen, and then also used Emporium. And what a great sign, Three Chaps uh, Coffee Company. Just really, really clever to, to kind of do a play on words and, and do a play with these shapes. So here you can see dotted uh, going through those silhouettes in craft, great texture on the silhouettes because they're really big. Then you can see all that staining. That's probably the stencil because we do a stencil of, of those drips or splatters, but we've also done stamps. But I love how she just used those those cups just kind of like a, a logo and using alphanumeric. I think that was, I think that's bold text. Uh, and then we have that emporium with the, the coffee company and how those colors are kind of inlaid. And then that's just an ideology frame panel, but very cool, especially for somebody that, you know, loves to drink coffee or tea for that matter. You know, just the idea, what you put on the top could be whatever, but using those cups and kind of maybe putting their name, so-and-so's coffee company or tea company, and then whatever their theme is in their kitchen, you know, maybe, it, maybe it's this, maybe it's a, a big coffee cup or tea, or maybe it's flowers. I just thought that's a great make to make for a friend or someone that really loves coffee and tea. Coffee kitchen? Yeah. Hmm, sounds familiar. I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool. We do love coffee. We do. But this one with the, oh, actually, I'm going to leave it here because I've got some other pieces over here. So this one, uh, the gentleman, because I'm going to get into the makes, but there again, I got two birthday cards from makers, so I'm going to show them, and I hope they don't mind because they weren't made for sharing. They were made for me, but I wanted to share them because, uh, so Vicky made me uh, this one, Zoe Hillman made me this, but they used the dies and I just, I loved it. I love that uh, the HBD and the little, see that little string and the balloon from Celebrate and how uh, Vicky used those numbers from Bulletin and, and gear. And I love that little pinwheel, but how she turned the cane into like a little pinwheel. Cause well, I'm a five-year-old say that five-year-old fueled by candy. That is my life. Uh, but I love how she also did kind of an industrial look. So both of these uh, birthday cards were, yeah, super sweet. So I just, I liked having the cards here. Very nice. So this card Barbara made for live. I love the colors. I love how fun it is with uh, the copper and the patina. I like how she took the same shape and actually stacked that. And then the message on there, one of a kind, where you can, you know, you have the repetition of the shape, but just a great strong message of having one of a kind. And there you can see that multi-level dotted in the back. It's a very powerful uh, design just because of how bold it is and how it can be used so many different ways. It's really interesting just in, in these three makes how, how it's on there, but a fun card that Barbara did. Then we have uh, a dimensional piece. This, this piece Jeanette created, look at that mixed media piece. 
with a die. So here she took the gentleman and created this uh, beautiful mixed media piece. So you can see if you look close, there's some uh, wonderful bulletin letters, shapes, solids, and outlines under all sorts of layers of goodness, right? Paste and textures and uh, embossing glazes, all sorts of things. And then The Greatest Show, because a lot of people were inspired by uh, The Greatest Showman for these silhouettes, and I don't blame them at all. But I love how she incorporated these, and then it's got dreams come true because, of course, P.T. Barnum. Well, if you haven't seen the movie, you want to see it, Greatest Showman. It's so good. Um, but I love how she created that and then the writing in the back. Again, very mixed media, totally staying true to, uh, to that style uh, when it comes to working with dyes. Because sometimes as makers, we think, well, hold on. Um, you know, I, I do this. I do art journaling. I don't do cards. I don't do this. And you, you really, I think, underestimate what certain art tools can really bring to what you make. I think it's important. Then we've got this one. Emma created this. This is an etc. tag, just an upside down. I love how she always uses the shape. Again, another play on The Greatest Showman. So she has The Greatest Show on that as well. I love seeing that Emporium font used. This one was Theory. So this was from Chapter 3. And just how she has all of those. I also like how, you know, it, sometimes it, it just depends on the shape. Like when I look at these, I looked at the silhouette as if they were looking at me. That's how I see those silhouettes. But when you look at this, Emma did it as if they're looking away from us. Like how she positioned the scarf, Ooh, right? That. How she put the cane on the other side, how she has, has the umbrella going on the other side as if they're walking away from us or we're, you know, they're getting ready to go on stage. Isn't that weird? It's so cool. I loved it. I just, I mean, holding it, I just figured it out. So I, I mean, I'm speaking. See, that's the thing. I speak as if I know all this, but I'm literally pulling it out of the sky because my brain just picks it out. I'm one of those things that I could look at something and in 30 seconds, I could tell you 10 things about it. Um, but yeah, I looked at it, I'm like, why is this scarf, oh, did I not? And I'm like, wait a minute. That's just very cool to see uh, as if they're going out on stage from those silhouettes. And I would have to say that every time I look at them, I see them as looking uh, at me and not away. Very cool. Just, I agree. Absolutely fabulous. Fabulous makes. Yeah, that silhouette, one of my faves. One of. And that's that's why I was happy to do three three shapes on there, plus those, plus the umbrella and the cane. All right. This next one, Zoe Hillman created. I, I love how she mixed the, the next two, which of course is going to be the gentleman, and then we get into tailored. So here we have an etc. tag, but so brilliant to actually create a story. Um, it kind of has, I don't know, it has a very, very cool uh vibe to it because of the whole emporium thing um i know the movie i can't even think of it right now it might come around someone might even say it, it reminds me of a movie with an umbrella english spy movie top hat taylor store somebody it'll be in the chat the kingsman there we go i got it see i i had words this reminds me of the kingsman now i now it all came together i don't know if that's what you're going for but i love how all of these uh grungy designs are here then we've got this black craft stock which i love that silhouette and then how she took those tailored pieces put yeah, it in the frame the there you go uh put it in then we've got the hat see how just that detail of those folded uh collars it just makes this die something bigger than it is and then how she took all of the ties kind of put those in a little shelf these are etc trims and then for emporium use that other necktie as the eye in emporium i mean that's just that's a cool make. It really is. Like that whole idea with the Kingsman is just <clears throat> so good. And having all those die pieces, we put so many pieces. Some people are like, oh my gosh, there's so many pieces for a tie. You don't have to use them all if you want it flat, but we wanted to give you all these layers so you could build on this with different colors and adding inks and elements to that. So a great way to use tailored. Then we have um, another birthday card <laughs> and I'm not saying it because like I just think it was really cool I think the makers are making around that time um, but how Kuberi used a hat and then she used the um, the bulletin for that card because I again I love having a big alphanumeric now I think that's really great uh, and I did message Tifa about this because when I saw it I was like I this gives me a vibe but I don't want to say it if that's not what you're going for but we shared the same vibe very cool Mad Hatter. I thought it was very brilliant with the whole Johnny Depp Mad Hatter and how she took 
tailored with the hat and uh, the bottom, and then use that winged impresslet in red with just that button there with hello there. It's just a, a really clever thing. And then she finished with the wings and another hat, but really a very cool, fun use for that. Because again, with this hat and the collar, like I mentioned Zoe Hillman's makes that she did with the stamp set for many years, just putting different things in between this space creates a whole different look. It could be a heart, it could be, you know, a clover or a flower or anything, arrows, all sorts of fun, crazy things. But I do love that really, really clever envelope. Once again, I don't think there's, okay. Just wanted to make sure it didn't have to take out a banner, but see the detail. So just like card maker outside, inside the Tifa front, open the envelope. That's, you know, when you get an envelope, you're not opening it from here, you're going to turn it over. So having that, that next thing to remind them is, is such a brilliant, brilliant touch in the creative making. Then Juliana created this and I'm so glad she did because this is another facet to that Taylor die set. It is beautiful for weddings and you may not see that from the packaging, but it is by taking it. This is of course, using the wood grain. This is the the two-tone wood grain that we did for seasonal, but hopefully many of you stocked up on it, but you could use any kind of cardstock, but just having that, that beautiful wood grain and using Emporium, maybe this is an announcement for something. You know, you, you could put a date there. You could do so many things, but by doing the hat and that collar and then just filling it up with flowers, I do see that die set uh, being great for certain wedding elements because the colors of it are so soft and so pretty, but the packaging doesn't feature that. But I, I love, again, when you look at, at that die set, you can see so many different aspects of it from, you know, obviously industrial, it could just be an element, it could have a whimsy feel, or it could have a very sophisticated feel, just because you think, what would I ever do with, with hats and collars? Well, that's what I would do with it, because I think that they have a lot of little elements. But again, brushstroke minis, they fit in. They fit in everywhere. Okay. So we're going to finish up with Road Trip. That's our last die set and the makes are just, well, it's, it's playful fun. That's what it is. It is, it's playful fun. And I think it needs to be playful fun to kind of, to kind of go there. So we'll start with Anita. Anita created this again. It's another birthday card. I'll let you guess the age. I hope you guess this one. Well, probably not because it's a ballerina, but it was a birthday card, but then she made a whole series of these and uh, when she was sending this, Paul's like, you need to send them all because they're, the idea is just so fun that Anita did. So the background, we have that 3D uh, number block. I love that embossing folder, but I love how she took road trip. She did all these cars and then put paper dolls in them where they're driving the cars. That it's just hilarious to have those paper dolls. I mean, her <laughs> in the car, she's like, we, but then changing road trip into a birthday by putting one of those elements from celebrate on the roof, right? You got a party hat, you got a gift and you've got the cake and then having the balloons. So, so seeing road trip just turned into this whimsical, fun <laughs> birthday card is so clever, right? Super fun. And then just taking that, that sign and kind of, uh, putting, putting the year that's really, really clever and fun. And I love how the cars are also done out of metallic. You got the car, and the balloons out of the metallic, but the background isn't. And then you can definitely see that the roadway is mosaic, right? I just noticed that, that the little road they're driving on, the little asphalt is, is all mosaic. My gosh, freaking brilliant. So clever. Would you? Yeah, no, that, that's so fun. It is, it is, it's so, so fun. Okay, yeah, they make me smile too, they're good. All right, then another make from, I'll, I'll take this one. I'm gonna grab this one, because this one, this one keeps falling over, because it's, it's a card, it's a Kubert card. So here we go. Mm. <laughs> here we go, a little, little sound effect, but yes. This is a card Kubert did, it's a long card, but I love how it's, you know, go seek and explore, and how taking the road trip, you can see that there's like a little vellum in there for uh, the, the glass, but I love how it's like, has all the numbers to 2023, like, let's go, let's make 2023 magical and go seek and explore. Just pulling that go. Isn't it clever? It's really a fun way to kind of, to kind of create with the die set. So even if you don't think like, oh, it's a card, this is something that you would just stand up on your desk. It's great. It's so fun or a great thing to, to top a calendar with as well. 
But yeah, I love that. I picked it up. I'm like, holy <laughs> moly. It's so, funny, it's so good. History. Yeah, it's it's an awesome, awesome make. And a great, that's the whole thing about, you know, sometimes when you do a car, you're like, what is the car? It could be anything. You're going to see that. You're going to understand, like, it could be for birthdays. It could be for New Year's. It, it can be for okay, dude, a I'm lot of fun things. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> That is the best. 2023. There we go. Let's go. Okay. The next one we have, this is another envelope from Tifa. So thanks for, thanks for a bonus make. I do. I love that. So here just, I really love the idea of taking road trip and just kind of like the dreamer where she has a paper doll just sitting on the back of the car, just dreaming. And it says, go your own way. So it, this was just, it's a very powerful make when you look at the stuff and I love the colors, the sparkly skies. Uh, the purpley envelope. I just think that's really pretty to, to just incorporate. But I think that was such a great message for the car. I think that was another thing that sometimes the, the whole road trip resonated with people. So taking that and just thinking about going your own way and just uh, seeing the world. And I, I thought it was, I don't know, it's a cool make, just powerful in its simplicity. I love it. Okay. Next up, we have Kathy Cowles, and this is so sweet because she was inspired by the movie Up for this card, and I loved it that um, she shared the whole inspiration about making this card, uh, just married, but instead of obviously the house in Up, she did the balloons on the car. So the balloons are from Celebrate, and she has them all tied to the car, and then she's got 65, and I, she just did little paper cut silhouettes that she did on there. And then she just has the car just kind of floating away, uh, just married. Hold on, the adventure begins. So if you're a fan of the movie Up, it, this was really that a sweet, so good. it's such a sweet uh, interpretation of that. And I love how, how she kind of tied those things together, that obviously this, this gave her a feel of that and how she was able to take that. Because I've said all the time that the makers, they are storytellers. They, they take an idea and whatever's in their head, they play it out on, on their makes and they should. And that to me is the, the best creative spirit that I hope you guys get out of these lives as well, is how, you know, never judge a book by its cover. It could be anything that you dream it to be. You just have to figure out how to do it. And as makers, that's what we love to do. So yeah, I think Hold On, The Adventure Begins. So sweet with the balloons. Great, great card. Then we have this card from Jan. And again, I love, I love so many different aspects of, of every single make. So this is taking Road Trip, but here she used bulletin that went through it. She used this alpha to actually inlay or embed into this wood grain, meaning you've got the wood grain, you cut the word wander out of it, you pop it out, you cut that again out of black, you put that piece back in so the wood grain lines up and you fill in with black wood grain. And I love how the word goes all the way through the design. So it cuts through the tree, it cuts through the luggage on the top, that's just actually laid on the top. So you can't actually cut through all those layers so this area is kind of the just added to the top because that's where the end goes. It's really just a, a clever way to incorporate that bulletin font. And you're going to see uh, the other makes, how they, how they use that font with it. Uh, but I love just the fun part of the car. Then she gave me a little bonus. She put a little note. So I did read it ahead of time because I didn't want to be, I was like, I don't know. It's like a picture of me or something. It's not happening. But this was clever. She said, I just wanted to share this idea that if you were looking for someone to drive the car, these little people, what is it? Maybe it's from Cityscape, uh, not from Cityscape. What's it called? I don't know. It was a Christmas die with a lamppost and a man and a woman holding a tree, whatever that one was. See, it's like, it's almost like putting these little trivia challenges out there, but it's that die, that little man is scaled as is the woman. You just have to flip it because I think they're going this way, but they're silhouettes. So it's very easy to flip. Um, but that was just a really nice little bonus where she's like, so if you want someone to, to drive the car, that's to scale. And again, stylistic. So if you can cut out a silhouette like Kathy, go for it. Paper dolls, go for it. I thought that was very clever that there was a die that could go into it. Christmas time, Zoe said. Thanks, Zoe. Um, that's the die, but really nice. So thanks for the little bonus. She's like, I just wanted to tell people, didn't want to put him on the car, but <laughs> I wanted him in there. So see? Because sometimes you have an idea and you're like, yeah, I don't want to play out that idea, but I still want to share it. And that's what we love about uh, what the makers do. So Zoe Hillman created this. I love this as well because you can take any adventure and give it all the feels, all the vibe. 
So here we have an etc tag and look at it. Doesn't it just make you so chilly, breezy, cold? I, I love it. I love how she incorporated a lot of different dyes as well. The, the, this is an old dye. This is, I think, maybe Alpine. See, I'm terrible with the names. Mountains, Alpine probably. Then we've got this great tree line. Look at how that dye, because that was that whole silhouette, how that frames it in, but just creating that forced perspective with Road Trip. Because you don't have to stack both pieces on the car. They're all separate. Alpine. So, there we go. See, I had it Thanks, right. Brother. I had it right. Uh, then we've got uh, Bulletin. And then we have just some handwritten. Again, that is another old school die. I love that font. That was really great. We had so many different sets of that handwriting, but look how great that is just written across that winter vacation. So I, I always love, even when I see it in advertising or anything, how your, your eye reads different fonts in a different order. You know, like I didn't read this as vacation winter. Like winter was like, that's what I read first. And then my eye kind of focused. I'm like, oh cool, winter vacation. Weird, right? But that's on the front, but you read it in reverse. At least I do. Yeah. So I think it's very, very clever. I love, again, the coloring all done with inking, inking pieces. But so think about it. If you take this, this could be a road trip for winter or summer or to the beach or wherever you like to go on an adventure. Um, I think the this particular die set, you'll see, just has, has so many great playful elements. All right. Final make. It's the big one, so I had to put it in the back. <laughs> uh, Emma created this vignette display panel uh, on Road Trip. And again, so much fun and so so playful with all of these pieces because she's got metallic, she's got Road Trip, calls it out. I love the transparency added there for the windshield. I also like how this is kind of overloaded, you know, a couple extra suitcases and uh, the, the bags where they're just tied up. She even added some little string on there. Then we've got some packages here, some little flowers. Some things to note, like uh, this map paper, this was a, a background from ideology backdrops. But one of the elements that are in the die set, in addition to the trees, is this little puff. Remember we talked about this all looking like popcorn, but you can see that it makes great cute little clouds because it's the same style and scale to the trees, but it can also make that little puff of smoke and you can use it uh, the same in the make, just changing up the colors. But very, very cute just to see all those little pieces. And then she's got like a little Route 66 with the arrow going there on the side. But yeah, uh, vignette display panel. It's a, it's a great surface to work on. You know, all the little details that Emma has, the little hardware heads, little arrows that she's got all the way around. I love the red and the green as well. And all of these are some little mica stain. Can you see those trees? Just beautiful details. And sometimes, you know, the makers just really want to do uh, detail pieces. Sometimes they have a story. Sometimes it's a card. Sometimes it's a, a theme or idea. But it's always just amazing how how they take these things and just rock it their way. So thank you makers. You guys really just once again, just blow my mind every time with, with what can be done. I mean, I love the design, obviously I designed it. Uh, thanks to Lisa for bringing these uh, ideas and designs to life and then seeing it like come together into something is like, wow, 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 wow. Okay. Yeah. Is everyone still around? Are we ready yeah. to do a little demo? Ready to do demo. There's your mat right there. All right. Let me move this in. I'm going to take my, okay. this would be the glass mat that we've kicked the yeah. whole entire time. It has been at my feet. I probably should. Yeah, I probably should move it, you know, next time because, well, whatever. All right. So let me straighten this up. I'm going to go here. If I go up here, I'm going to get a little bit of that light in. So let me see if I can move that. Let me see. I don't think I can move that at all. I think I can. Nope. It's got to stay there. So it's either going to be there or not. So we'll have to figure out Let that. Let me just erase that. No, I'm kidding. Okay, here we go. Let's just talk about stuff. I have no particular order. Uh, I've been watching the chat and hopefully you guys really are um, are being inspired by by all sorts of different things. We're gonna, we're gonna we are gonna talk about some Sizzix stuff and hopefully I can inspire and answer some ideas. It's not a huge demo, but it, it's just some stuff that I kind of want to remind you of. Okay, so first off, I'm gonna talk about um, just real quick before I get into the inky stuff about looking at your dies and I'll, I'll talk about the remix. So I did a, a live last year near the end yeah, it's that been last year, I know, yeah. right. Um, yeah. That we did like a little remix and the whole idea behind it was looking at your dies and looking at different sets and seeing how they can bring them together uh, and create. If you haven't checked it out, I know it's Christmas, but hopefully it just the message behind it about looking at what you have going into your dies and looking at the shapes is really important. 
This guy, he's one of my faves. Uh, this is Colorize Oliver. He's, he's just a hilarious bunny. He's so fun and so cute. And of course, when, when I, I did him, it's like, I, I need to create something really cute with him. So I went into the tailored die set and made a little straw hat. So that's the hat from tailored. The stripe, I just stamped some polka dotted paper because Stacy has us doing all the tiny dot stamping everywhere. I also made him a polka dotted bow tie. I took the little daisy from Bunny Games. Those are the little daisies at the bottom and made him a, a little hat. But how great is he that like we can put on a little hat. He can have a little little polka dot bow tie. And if we wanted to, I'm just going to take this because I can because it's here. Uh, twist it off. It's got a little foam tape. Maybe he's going to bring some candy to his little sweetheart. So now Oliver, an Easter bunny, could be the cutest little love struck bunny. Somebody loves you. I mean, you can do so many different plays. I probably wouldn't do this foam tape on here. Let me rip this off the back. There we go. Oh, how cute this works. Isn't he cute? Changes him so much. But this was the idea of the remix that if you go in and just just remember that just remember that all of these dyes can be mixed and matched when you're like oh i wish i had a little flower you probably have something with a little flower thinking about these these ties we saw that with juliana and the the wedding go in and just stamp paper if you need a little polka dot thing find a stamp if you don't have that pattern paper really really cute to change it and that's what i love about that little straw hat is hilarious and and putting a, a, one of those pieces of chocolates, he's just bringing a piece of chocolate. Or that could be a fancy chocolate box. It could be anything. But I just wanted to touch on that because I know as we get into a new year, it's like, oh, that was so Christmas ago. But this is really, the remix is a mindset. It's about, as you look into these new dyes and new designs, you have to think of and remind yourself, uh, you know, what else could I do with it? And th I think the big reason that I want to mention that is we did get a lot of messages, uh, some great messages, thank you. Uh, some not so great messages, so no thank you. But it was really about, um, you know, I, I didn't have that die, I didn't get that die, now that die is $100 on eBay or I can't find it anywhere. Well, things can't last forever in our world and nobody really has the timeline of what's here and what's gone. All I can say is we put in the time and effort into these lives and these makes to inspire you. And I understand that sometimes you need to see a certain thing to really get you inspired. But at the same time, you have to, Keep in mind that a product may not be around by the time that inspiration strikes. And so this is not a ploy for you to just to buy everything, you know, crazy. It's just saying that if you can find inspiration in what you have or what you want or really deep in deep dive into that, it's really, really important to go and, and kind of understand the potential of, of your investment. That's really what it is. OK, so first thing we're going to talk about just so we can talk about it is we're going to just talk about a couple of ideas um, and that is uh, just a touch base on on inking the dies. so when I talked about wood slice let me just grab that real quick and I'm not going to demo this because I have demoed it but I want to I want it to be part of the demo okay so when I talk about inking the die itself it is important to remember that that certain dies most dies uh, that have a a great deboss line is well it is debossable so what i mean is on these particular dies so we have this cut line and we have this deboss line this is going to be what leaves the impression if you want to ink these dies and this is the same thing with frame tags or vintage labels i recommend archival you might have another ink that works for you but if you try to use regular distress ink or regular distress oxide inks they aren't very friendly to metal. They're not meant for metal, so they don't, they don't want to transfer onto the dye. Uh, archival, there's, there's other oil-based inks out there that will work as well, but an oil-based ink is what's going to sit on the metal long enough for you to then ink the dye, place it on your paper, run it through, and it will cut it, and then it will push that color into those areas. So, for example, on this sample, this dye was inked with ground espresso archival, using a brayer that's the other thing i have people that are saying but you know i'm really gentle you know with my ink pad well gentle is probably not going to put enough ink on there and then if you tap 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 you're going to get ink where you don't want it so my advice is to try to try to really figure out the brayer and and understand that and and learn if you want that to be 
inked in there. If you don't, then don't bother with it. But I just wanted to answer that question because after the dyes last year uh, that were inkable, we had many people were like, oh no, he said he used Distress. Yes, but Distress Archival is really archival ink. It's just the Distress color of ground espresso. But the formulation of this is completely different than regular distressing. So I just wanted to mention that before we get into other stuff. Again, you can go back and watch videos where we do actually ink the dyes. We did that with uh, the frame tags and the labels. Okay. Excellent, excellent. All right, let's. What do you need? Nothing, nothing, nothing. <laughs> okay. Hmm? Um, no, you can take that. Thanks, Mario. Okay. Let's talk about these because I think if I don't, there's going to be comments for the next hour about these. And they're really great. And I don't blame you for being excited about them because I was excited about them. Why? Because I love to distress things. I love to sand things. In my ideology line, I had a sanding grip. We had this great little mini grip that you could put sandpaper on for years. I still have it and I still use it, but it was retired. And I loved that and I use it for many, many things. But I also found that sometimes for smaller things, I wanted a little bit of sandpaper. And so I went to Ranger and I said, I wish you could find a sandpaper that could work on the blending tool. And they're like, sure, sure, what, what do you want? Well, not all sandpaper is created equal. And yes, you can find sandpaper at the dollar store. Go for it, you do you. You're gonna find out very quick that that sanding paper, when you use it, all of a sudden your work surface is like a beach because all that sand falls off. And that's okay. If that's all you need it for, that's okay. When we were sourcing this, what I wanted is if you've ever had any type of rotary tool, you know those sanding pads are this really fine sandpaper that is like incredibly durable? That is what we sourced. So these sanding discs, there are 10 discs in a package. It is the same fine grit sandpaper, but you can see it doesn't look like normal sandpaper. And then on the back is this fabric. This is the fabric that goes on to that Velcro of a blending tool. It just sticks on there. That's it. It is designed to be larger than the wood handle because if you are sanding, you don't want the wood edge to hit your, especially metallic paper or something, because it's going to kind of grind, grind off. Um, yeah, Kathy said like nail file. That was the other inspiration. It was like, you know, an emery board, me an emery board meets uh, like a, a rotary tool. It's just that type of sandpaper. But you're gonna see that by having it for a blending tool, and now, yes, I have a dedicated handle for this because that's like my, my sanding tool. It just makes for sanding a little bit easier. So let's just talk about why would we sand? What would we sand? Okay, besides the obvious like uh, vignette box or the edge of something, what, how does it work in the Sizzix world? Like why did I want it before Sizzix? Well, you can do a lot of cool things with sanding and die cuts, okay? You do embossing and you could also do your die cuts. So I just wanted to share and you could even do some metallic things so I'll just take you through it and do some demos, try to answer questions as we go, little by little. And it will, believe it or not, kind of revolve around sanding. So um, let's take, I'm gonna take, a, I'm gonna work with my fold away because the Switch Plus is a little too big on here. Let me take that, I should probably put these here. I'm gonna just take Elegant, I got or Entangled, sorry. Um, there we go. Gotta look through the Ziploc bag for all I want because the demo for me, I prep a little bit, but I don't prep because I don't want them to be forced. I want them to just kind of be whatever, natural. We're gonna do uh, an embossing folder. Now, did you know that on the Sizzix 3D and multi-levels, these ones that are thicker, bigger, that they are not your standard four and a quarter, five and a half. In fact, if I go into uh, my, my handy measuring right here on, on the media mat, so these are four and a half by six and a quarter. So that is what a 3D or multi-level folder. So these ones that only require one cutting pad, they're bigger than the old school embossing folders. So here's a little trick. Maybe you know it, and if you do, this would be a good time for, for you to mute, get up, walk around. But if you want to create this, and you work with eight and a half by 11, which I do, I like to work with it. This is distressed watercolor cardstock. Obviously, if I was doing a standard A2, four and a quarter, five and a half, I would quarter cut this and I'm in business. But how do I approach this uh, and yield enough paper? So here's what you're going to do. You're gonna take your cardstock and our first cut is going to be at four and a quarter. 
going in long ways, four and a quarter. And if you're like, well, how does the paper go in? Well, the paper can only go in one way. If you can figure out another way, you do that. Four and a quarter is our first cut. Okay. Got it? So far, so good. Then I'm going to take this and I'm going to turn it and I'm going to do six and a quarter. And six and a quarter is pretty much a little box after the six. It could be ish. We're talking about embossed paper. You can trim it, but that's it. We're going to just turn that same piece of paper because I don't want to have to deal with that yet. And now I'm going to go to my uh, six and a quarter. So it's like four and a quarter, six and a quarter. Because the reality is, even though the folder is four and a half, do you see these two wings on the side? The embossable space is actually smaller. The embossable space is four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Look at that, the perfect fit. So now that we have that piece, I'm going to take this piece of cardstock and this piece of cardstock, I'm going to bring it, place it in, and I'm going to go to that same six and a quarter. All right, six and a quarter right there. That's like one little box over. And I'm going to trim this little piece off. Then I'm going to turn it. And this started out as eight and a half. And half of eight and a half is four and a quarter. So now I've just cut three panels that fit this folder from an eight and a half by 11. And that's what I have left. Maybe you knew that. Maybe you didn't. But you might have been wasting a lot of paper for a long time. I did. So that's just, that. That, is, that is what I did. And I always know the four and a halfs because if you look at this, the four and a half, or four and a quarter and five and a half, those are all uh, dotted lines. So your four and a quarter and five and a half is always there. So hopefully that helps you, uh, especially if you use up this kind of paper, eight and a half by 11, distress uh, watercolor cardstock, mixed media heavy stock, all of that. That to me is how you can yield the full size panels for this. Now you might say, well, why would I do that? Because I'm only going to make four and a quarter by five and a half. That's fine. I just love that when I'm embossing that I can get a full panel and then I can decide where I want to cut it for a card. That's just me. You don't have to. If you would rather just get a quarter cut and you're like, no way, that's, that's a high end stuff. I'd rather quarter cut and I'll just pick an area on my folder. You can definitely do that as well. I'm not saying you have to emboss a full sheet. I'm just saying if you are one of those people like I was, there would have been many, many times that I was wasting paper because I was only getting two cuts out of it because I didn't figure it out that way. Like I said, maybe you know that, maybe you didn't. So How many people said they didn't know that? now that you know, yeah. we're going to do it again quickly. So you could write it down. First cut, four and a quarter. It can only go in one way, four and a quarter. Turn it, six and a quarter. That's one. Next piece, pick it up exactly how it came out, six and a quarter. Turn it, four and a quarter. Done. There you go. Okay. Why is that important? Well, because we're going to do some embossing. It wasn't just like, hey, let's do this. Okay, here we go. Now let's talk about embossing paper because we are going to do some uh, embossed cardstock. I have some pieces. Now, already cut using that. Now that was only eight and a half by 11 tricks. Sometimes you have to just, you know, sacrifice different pieces. And quite honestly, uh, if my piece doesn't yield that, sometimes I will just, just cheat the system. But I always feel that we're going to have a use for some type of leftover cardstock. So for Entangled, I'm going to do one in color. So this is uh, Ideology Craft Stock. And we'll talk about paper really quick. I won't get too much into it, but these are the cardstocks that I like to work with. This one, and, uh-oh, there we go, I got it. And this one. So Sizzix does a ton of cardstock, ton, ton, ton. Um, theirs is a different size, so theirs is not like standard. There's a size for uh, the UK, so you get a little bit more paper, big. But they come in like these color packs, these little color story packs. Now, their cardstock is about 80 pounds, so it's a little thinner, but not too thin. To me, it's great for die cutting. This is the one that has that linen texture. All the colors have the linen texture. They do different styles. They do opulence, they do pearls, they do all sorts of that. But that's really uh, the main cardstock that I work with because of all the colors. So when you see all the variety of colors, because they have a bazillion different kinds of this, this is what I use for all of the colors that I work with. If I want to do something grungy or vintage or uh, having a little bit more distressed look, I work with this stock. So this is, craft stock. Now craft stock from ideology used to be in an eight by eight pad and it used to have texture. Um, I think it was a year ago, maybe a little bit longer. 
we changed it. I got rid of the texture. Why? Because I want to stamp on it. And you can't stamp on textured paper uh, very well, not with that little, little bit of texture. So this, this is now a smooth surface, but this is a hundred pound craft. A hundred pounds, so it's much thicker. You can hear it. It is craft on the back and the color is printed. So unlike a solid color core cardstock, where this is just that color pulp through and through, this has been printed with a color and craft is on the back. So when I sand it, which you see where I'm going with that, it is going to reveal the craft core. There, it's available in warm, cool, neutral, and black. Thanks, Zoe Hillman. Black craft, uh, which is great, as well as metallics. Now, the metallics that Stacy used and that, that I used in the samples, this is also metallic craft stock, meaning it is craft paper with metallic printed. What makes this unique is it's not a foiled paper. So yes, you can sand this because you don't have to worry about that foiling ripping off. You can actually sand off the metallic ink from these papers. The metallic craft stock, same weight, same uh, heavy weight, is in a color metallic pack, and it's also in a classic metallic pack, which is silver, gold, bronze, champagne, and even that metallic black that I used. Really, really beautiful papers. This is really a substantial paper. It's very thick. You can see it's so thick that it wants to bow. This is just how it is. And when you take it out, it bows even more, but when you stick it down, it will lay flat. So those are the papers. So as we demo and they're like, what paper are you using? It's gonna be, it's gonna be craft stock because I'm sanding. So let's emboss. Let's do a few things. I'm going to use, like I mentioned, fold away. Um, when I emboss, I have to be honest, I, I prefer the fold away just because of the pressure uh, it has. It's usually because of its pressure is a single pass for 3D for me. Uh, I know that if, you know, back in the day when 3D came out, it was like 3D three times. And if you have a big shot or a vagabond, that is true. If you have a fold away, I would suggest one, one pass because it is that much pressure. If you want to do two, three, four, go for it, but you really don't need to because the machine is really that heavy. Uh, follow the manufacturer directions for your machine. For this, it's going to be my platform and one cutting pad. One, that's going to be my top layer pad. When I do papers, most papers I will mist with water. Most of them, not all of them, but probably 90% of the papers I do. How much water do I spray? Well, I take my sprayer, I give it one quick spray. I'll spray on camera for the first time. Just do that, turn it over. So I commit, so I don't like hesitate. This creates a really fine mist on both sides and we're good to go. And do I do the same with metallic? Yes, because this is inked just like this. It's just a metallic ink, no difference. So I'm going to place this down. I don't like to put it up to the fold because then it buckles. So I take it down to the bottom edge. So I leave that little gap. You see that? I leave that gap of the hinge. That just allows this, <laughs> hit the phone. That just allows this to fold. Now everybody's got their own opinion on how you work a 3D folder. Totally up to you. Some people like to go fold in. I like to go flaps in. That's just me. I find it a little easier. And I'm going to be honest that certain folders uh, are a little bit challenging to go through, especially the fold away because it's so much pressure that you kind of, so I always have it angled. Can you see that? I always go in at the angle because if you try to go in straight, meaning if that goes in straight, you're like hitting a speed bump and it's so hard to get, get over that speed bump. I find that just that slight angle of my folder these still have to be squared up. They can only go in the machine that way. But that slight angle allows the rollers to kind of grab it a little bit at a time and before it gets into the middle. That just helps. So I'm gonna hold the back of this with my hand until the machine grabs it. Once it does, right, don't let your handle go. My hand is on the handle, okay? Don't let that go. But once it's engaged, get, take your hand off of here. Because if you keep holding it, when these come together, it is going to pinch the snot out of you. And you're only going to do that once, twice if you're, well, if you're thick. So don't do it, okay? Just happen. Then go up here, and that's going to give you the leverage uh, to crank that through, okay? Because you, you have to have leverage. It's not an easy thing. Now, if you're doing it with the switch, I would say on the switch, maybe, maybe twice. The switch is also very powerful. Not as powerful as this, but I think two times is good on the switch plus, that's good. But one time is absolutely fine, okay? So once this is out, 
That is my embossed design in one pass of a fold away. I mean, jeez. See what I mean? More than that, and this would just be, well, it might actually die cut. I mean, it'd be like pulp for me. So, so that's really it. But yeah, a lot of times people kind of forget about getting that sandwich in. And, and I've done it to myself because, see, I told you, I got pork shop hands. I've done it so many times where I'm just cranking and I'm like, even though it's engaged, I'm like trying to help it because I think it's going to run away or something. And once it grabs it and those cutting pads come down in the back and they get your hand, yippity do, it is not, not fun. Okay, we're going to push that back. We're going to do metallic. One, two, take that in, open the folder. So I just kind of square it up with my fingers. You can see I hold my hand left to right. That's going to square it in there. I'll just square it on the corner there. Then I place it down. Again, I like to go in with the mouth open because I just, see like to me, this is so much fatter right here. It's a lot for that machine to chomp down on. And this is tapered. Again, I don't know what Sizzix recommends, but this is what I recommend and I'm the one doing it. So that's what I'm, again, angled. Got it from the back, pushing this into the machine, trying to get it to engage. Now, if it doesn't, see how that doesn't, see how it's spitting it out of the back? Sometimes you gotta just readjust until it does it. Sometimes you just have to like go for it. I'll get it. But once it does, it will go. Well, no, I have it. It's wet. That's my problem. See, I have water everywhere. That's why I don't do water on, because my platform is wet. <laughs> That's why I don't spray water on camera, <laughs> because you try to show it, and then you, you're working on a slip and slide. Okay, let's hope for the best on this. Jeez, it is. It's like I got water everywhere now. Okay. There we go. Thanks. There we go. Yeah. Because normally I'm working on a giant piece of media grip under my mat, or you can have like shelf liner. Okay. Well, it helps if, if your well if your stuff is wet, it's not going to work. So there we go. There's our metallic. Ooh. Beautiful. Okay. We're good with that. Let's see. Do we want to do what other fold did we have? Let's do. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna emboss uh, mosaic a little bit later. Okay. But before I move on from embossing these pieces, let me die cut something. So for die cutting, I think I'll take, let's take that silhouette. Let's take the gentleman. There we go. We'll take that. Okay. <laughs> but isn't that funny? Just the logic of it. Cause I never spray over your, my table. I just, you spray it over the floor. That's what you do. All right. So let's take one of these guys. He's good. We'll take him. They're all good. I love these silhouettes. And for this one, I'll do this out of, do I have any? No. I'll do this out of black. Let me just grab a sheet. I have some down here. I have a whole stack of black. I have all my card stock and I didn't even take it out. I only had Mario do packaging. Like, oh yeah, I love this. Cause again, this is craft with black. A whole pack of it thanks to Zoe Hillman cause she's the one that pushed it. Wouldn't it be cool if you did a whole pack of black? I'm like, cool, but probably not happening. Yet we did it and it continues to sell. So they continue to do it. Okay, so when I'm cutting this out, you can go in and do paper cutters. Some people use paper cutters for everything. It depends on what I'm doing. Um, if I'm just going to do, you know, something quick, I'll just take the shears and I can just chop this up. But again, whatever's going to work for you. What's nice about this die as well is um, it could give you a silhouette piece also, meaning maybe you're going to do a, a junk journal. Maybe you want to do uh, a window. In fact, let's, let's just do that. Let me cut this into, let's just cut this into more of a, a square or a bigger rectangle. So I'll do like four and a quarter. Let's, let's say we're going to put this into a book because I, I want the positive and the negative piece. Let's do that. Okay. For this, I need to get my other pieces back. So because I'm die cutting, now I need to put on my thin die adapter. That's that. My cutting pad that I cut into. And I try to keep one fairly clean. The one that I cut into is a hot mess. But as long as you rotate and flip your cutting pads, they'll last. I've not done the melty bakey thing, but that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to do with my paper. I've got my die face down. I've got it somewhat. I'm going to stand him up. Let's kind of put him there. That's good. You could tape him if you wanted him in a specific spot, but oh, he did a little dance. He'll be fine where he's at. No, he won't. I'm going to move him. Okay, there we go. It's so weird, like always trying to 
to I don't I don't die cut a lot on camera because you know I, I like freedom I like to you know get my arm and I feel like I'm knocking everything around all right this is just easy peasy with this you just fold in the other thing about the fold away um, often there's you know intricate dies that are just going to cut really easy so here's what we have with this guy first take a look at that look at that cool silhouette that's great for a journal because you could do a reveal a page it's a it's a large piece um, and then we have our die so we got to take out the pieces now you can use a, a die brush you can use a die pick this piece is going to be a go away because that's the the opening and then you have your little poke holes i just kind of start with one and once it lifts i just pull it out i don't go and poke everything in so we have this piece as well now here's some options when it comes to sanding because you might be saying tim we talked about the sanding grip you're getting distracted no i'm not i'm just showing you what you need um, when it comes to sanding so this we can leave it open because i'm going to use it again so i'm not going to fold it away yet and we'll talk about sanding if you are going to sand and if you own a glass mat of any kind or a craft mat of any kind do not sand on either one of these surfaces you will scratch it indefinitely so when you do sanding or any kind of kind of messy work, I just have a piece of chipboard that I sand on or do any kind of cutting. So maybe it's a cutting mat that you want to work on, but do not work directly on the glass for sanding because really you'll scratch it up. So the sanding disc, I've had this one on. This is the first one I've had on and I've had it for, for quite a while. I'm not, I don't know how long it lasts because it just depends on what you're doing. So here's what we're going to do when it comes to uh, the papers. The papers, what I love about this sanding disc now is I can just go directly on in a comfortable manner like I am for blending in that circular motion. And now I can sand that print. It's so much easier and to me it's very, uh, well, you'll see in a second. So when we sand, we're gonna have paper dust over the top, meaning you don't necessarily know how much you've sanded until you remove this. So you could use a paper towel, some type of dry cloth. I just use my my cloth right there and take a look at how cool that is when it comes to sanding it doesn't get rid of the detail because we don't want to shred this into pulp and this is craft paper by the way so you know a grocery bag is not super resilient so it was important that we could just scuff off the surface it's also nice that if you if you wanted a specific area right you can still focus on that and you don't have to use a lot of pressure let the tool do the work you're not pushing down with a lot of force this is just it just it doesn't deteriorate it's it's really crazy stuff it's really really good so this is going to be color and I'll, I'll just keep sanding this and i wanted to do something uh, intricate for this one just so you can see that even the most detail it shows up okay that's going to be nice when we ink it could we do the edges yes so you could treat the edges of cardstock the same way you would do ink blending See how we can sand just that fine edge? If you've ever tried to sand the edge of paper, so nice that we could just, everything you know about a blending tool, you do, except you're not inking, you're sanding. So it's exactly the same motion. You, you don't have to learn anything different. It's just, you gotta remember that that's the one with sandpaper before, before you try to ink something. So for metallic, same idea. We could sand this as well. Although I'm not gonna sand it yet. I'm gonna sand this after we do that antiquing finish. But let's talk about a die cut. Did you know you can sand a die? Some people are like, well, yeah, of course I can sand a die. And you can, you could pick, pick something up and sand. But if you have the die and you have the negative that it goes in, it's cut out, you can inlay those pieces again. And now that's gonna give you a flat surface to take that and sand the edges. And it's gonna do a couple of things. It's gonna sand kind of Kind of both components if you will it's going to sand the outside of the cut piece and it's going to sand the inside of the frame piece let me just move that around and i just pop it in you could have some tape on the back if you want it's, it's really up to you you could work on um if you had a media grip under there the media grip would work because that's going to be kind of sticky uh, but most of the time i'll just use my hands because i'm going to hold it anyway so even if i had something sticky I need it for leverage and I'm just taking the sanding disc and I went all the way around that to sand it and now I've got let me get my towel wipe that off wipe that off so you can do this with flowers with butterflies whatever whatever it is you're doing um, but now we've got a great sanded edge so we've got kind of a cool highlight and we've got this guy sanded to perfection 
Otherwise, I would be doing this. And that, to me, it just, I mean, you could still go in and do it. So if I wanted more of his hat kind of worn, I could do that. But it's so much easier to go all the way around it when it's still in the paper than doing it small. So that just, to me, quick, how do I clean glass glitter off my media mat? Easy. Swiffer. Done. Static takes it right off. That's the best. All right. Cool. Quick question, quick answer. That was nice. Damn, so, yeah. So, fast. so, because I know the frustration of that, um, and that's really the best way. So, that is just a great tip for sanding dies. And every time it's going to be a little different, see, depending on how heavy handed you are in certain areas. But I like that. You get what you get and you don't throw a fit. But, I mean, look at that one. That just kind of, see how he kind of radiates? Really cool. Cool, positive, and negative. But that's just another thing if you wanted to sand. I think that that's really, that's really great. Okay, so for the metallics, and I'll get to inking this one in a second, but we're going to talk about uh, the metallics and how we create uh, an effect. Oh, rats, I'm going to do one more. Y'all don't mind. I'm just going to do it off camera real quick. I just wanted a piece of black because this is the this is onyx metallic. So see, it's still craft, but it's a black metallic. Um, and I got the machine here. I just needed to emboss this piece. Okay. <laughs> I don't want to make the wrong sandwich. Everyone can kind of hear me. They're like, what's he doing over there? Well, you know, this is how it is when I demo. Okay, I just want to get this piece really quick. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, good, got it. Okay, well, I'm still going to fill it, right? As makers, we know bigger space does not necessarily mean more room. It just means more space to fill. That's how it is. Okay, okay. So we have a, a black. Now, sometimes you're going to get a little crack. Just depends on the finish. It is what it is. You know, certain designs, you know, not every paper was designed to take an embossing folder and an embossing folder was not designed to work with every paper. But you get what you get. And if you can manipulate it enough, you're going to be totally fine. OK, we're going to paint these. The paint is what's going to give us uh, that very cool finish that I had with. Let me just grab the I don't even know where the samples went. What are you looking for? The, these. These guys, this is, this is what transformed regular metallic into this. Okay, so we're going to do this effect and we're going to do this effect. And that is done using paint. We're going to work with distress paint. You can use any kind of acrylic paint that's going to work for you. Um, I like distress paint because it's fluid. Uh, it gives me a little bit of room, a little bit of space to kind of work on things, a little bit of, of drawing time or play, but use what you have. Make sure it's going to work for how you want it to be. I'm going to work with blending tools. I have tools dedicated to, to paint, well, foams, I should say, but I have tools as well because I use black paint a lot. So I just have a dedicated uh, dome foam with black because the distress paint doesn't dry crunchy. So this is dry paint, but it's just as soft as ink because these paints don't have fillers. So sometimes you'll have a craft paint and it's really junky. Okay. So just kind of keep that in mind. All right. So let's start with this. So here we're going to do gold and we're going to do uh, black paint. Black paint for distress is incredibly fluid. I don't know if you can hear it. It's the most fluid of all the paints because I kind of wanted it more inky. The other colors are a little thicker. So what we're going to do is take this. I'm going, you can either work on on your craft mat if you want to that to me is the easiest way to clean up versus the glass because this will wipe off super easy i'm just going to drip on some paint don't need a lot just drip it on i'm going to take that blending tool and i'm just going to paint the paper that simple i'm not trying to wipe it off i'm actually trying to get black paint wherever i can so that maybe that's pouncing maybe that's moving but don't try to burnish it off at this point okay there we go. There we go. Okay. So I've dabbed it on there, set that down. I'm going to clean the paint off. Let me see if I have a piece of, of course I don't. My gosh. Every time I look for something, I don't have it. Oh, crazy. Can you grab me a piece of sticky grid over here, please? Sure. A sticky grid will totally work while that paint is setting up. Uh, I was hoping for a small piece, but I'm, I'll take this one. I'll cut it down. I'll cut it down. It's, I have one for the sidekick. This is work. This is. Uh, no, those are adhesive sheets. No, denied. Okay. 
So I'm just going to take a piece of, so sticky grid comes in a, a big sheet. It also comes in a small sheet. I'm just going to take a piece of sticky grid. I think that's going to be long enough. Here you go. No, no. that's okay. It's fine. Okay. Here's, it, and you could do this with other things. You don't have to use sticky grid, but you can do whatever, um, whatever you want. So sticky grid is a grid that when you peel it off, it kind of reveals a little, a little tack. So I'm just, I've cut a little piece, but the edge of it is, is paper. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to place that on to the sticky grid this way. Now I can hold this while I wipe this off, because if you touch it with your fingers, you're going to get fingerprints on your paint. That's up to you. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take a dry paper towel and I want to start dabbing this and I want to see, I'll, sh I'll hold it closer to the camera, but I'm dabbing the paint. And what I'm trying to see is, what is the paint doing? If the paint is just coming off like it is, it's not dry enough. So I just need to let it dry a little bit. Here's going to be kind of the trick to this, I guess, which is going to be when it comes to this paint, there's this weird little window that's going to be, which is if you wipe it off right away, you won't get the effect. If you let it dry, distress paint is permanent when it dries and it won't come off. Okay. So for me, it's just about letting this dry a little bit. I'm going to dab it. Okay. Now I can see that a lot of paint isn't coming off, which means it's good. Now I can go in with a dry paper towel and I'm just dragging it in different directions. And so what this is doing is it's going to start removing the paint, having that sticky grid. You could use a post-it note as well. I just find that the post-its not enough stick. So that's why I like sticky grid because I could put more gunk underneath and I can reuse it. So I just don't know what I did with the piece that I had. So all I'm doing is just going in different directions until I like what I like. And this is, see how it's taking off that black, but it's leaving it in the recess areas. I can leave it built up around the edge. You can take off as much as you want with that dry paper towel. If you take off too much, add more. You can always repaint it and do it again and again. But once you're happy with it, you're done. Let it dry. You can use a heat tool or you can let it air dry. Um, if you're going to use a heat tool, just take it off of that sticky grid really quick. You can take that release paper, cover it back up. I'll just take a heat tool and dry it. The paint usually takes a few minutes to dry, but if you use a heat tool, it's only going to take a few seconds. And that's only if you want to sand it, which I'm going to do next. So it's good. Could you use a piece of the media grip for that? You could try that with, I mean, I have media grip. Let's try it on the next one and see if that grips it enough. I'll give it a whirl. All right, so there is our metallic. So next we're gonna do the black one. So for the paint that's here, you can just wipe this off dry, like a dry erase board. If you add more water, you're just gonna make more paint. So just use a cloth and, so that's why I painted here, because if I painted here, I would need to, to clean it with a cleaner. So the next one for black, I'm gonna use ice spruce. You could use white, you could use antique linen, you could use whatever color you want. I'm going to need a different blending foam, so I have a lighter one for that. And that's going to be on the black embossed one, this one right here. So the, I, the question was, can you use a piece of media grip? We're about to find out. So we'll take a piece of media grip. Uh, we'll use this one. That should work. Let's place that on the glass. That might be a really good little trickety-boo. That's good. Okay. So paint, shake it up. There's a mixing ball in there. This is good. And media grip actually might even be better because it's going to give me more, you know, grip on my finger and the paper. It's a great idea. Okay. And then I can actually heat dry it without taking it off. See, it's even better. I, I agree. Ice spruce, just such a good color. I'm going to start with just a little bit of that, see how far we, we get with it. But we're going to do the same thing. And that is just try to get the paint everywhere. If you're still seeing black, you know, or a significance of black, that's probably not gonna, gonna work to your favor. And you wanna work fairly quickly because we wanna get a layer on everything, but we also need time to take that off. Okay, we don't need to clean that. That's just gonna be for any kind of light paints. The paint won't re-wet either. So this foam I would use for other colors, antique linen, whatever, because the paint never re-wets once it dries. So let's place that down. There we go, that'll give us a little bit of grip gonna let it dry for a second. I don't like to use my heat tool because honestly, it could be a second and it's game over. Once, once that paint dries, 
you'd have to sand it off because it wouldn't come off and it wouldn't give you the effect that it's going to give you. So I just start with a paper towel again, kind of see this one, regular paints dry much quicker than black. So this is like already ready. And now I'm just going to go in. So this is like, if I'm holding this, it, see, it's not, it's, yeah, it's not doing, it's not gripping it enough because you, you really are creating a significant amount of, of friction trying to get the paint off. So, but that was good. It was worth trying, right? Now, the other thing is get a clean part of your paper towel when you're doing this, because if you use the same part of your paper towel the whole time, you're just taking whatever paint is on there and essentially painting it around. So this one, I just, I kind of like to do little, little digs and little twists and turns. And I use a paper towel because I like the texture it gives. It gives it a, a very burnished, scratchy, beautiful look to this metallic. I mean, come on. Wow. So good. All right, I'll pop that off. A little drying with the heat tool. Beautiful, beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay. All right. Okay, what's the comment? Paula said, that's fine with glossy paper. What about matte colored? Well, matte colored, we're gonna use ink. You can't do this with matte colored. We have matte colored, because I'm gonna show you inking, because I am, I'm an equal paper person. So I will show you matte paper, but coated paper is paint, and that's what creates this effect. Because ink, the same way paint won't work well on here, ink won't work well on here. So you gotta have different mediums for different papers, and that is beautiful. And I always like to show black on metallic, and the fact that even if you have a color metallic, that if you use a more of a chalkier color paint, you get such a beautiful shabby effect. Very, very cool. So what if it's matte paper? Well, I did a matte paper. That we're gonna need to ink. We're gonna need to do ink on that. Now, if you wanted it to not be a matte paper, you could seal it. You could seal it with collage medium. That wouldn't make it matte paper. You could take a matte paper and seal it with resist spray, which we're gonna do for the mosaics. That wouldn't make it matte paper either. So for this, I'm just going to take some Distress ink and I will use a grip for that. So let me get a little grip for the ink pad. A little media grip for my Distress. And I'll probably just do both. That's why I like to have a couple pieces of media grip for, for the ink pads. It does make it, make it easier for me. Okay. And I'm going to take an ink blending tool. Now I have an ink blending tool. I'm gonna to use the same blending tool for both because it's the one for browns. Um, and when I blend, I like to work on glass. I prefer to blend from the glass versus this. This is for uh, inks, glues, paints. Uh, it, e it is heat stable up to like 370 degrees. So you can use your embossing. Uh, so it's a, it is a heat stable thing. I dry and everything on there. But this, I'm just gonna pick up some ink and now we're going to go in and do the blend. And what's cool about the fact that we did some sanding first is the craft is going to absorb color completely different than the color of the paper. You'll see in a second because I'm just going to. And I like to switch up the browns because this one's cool, this one's warm, this one's light, one is dark. And you'll see it doesn't contaminate them um, doing a blending tool. I know much to how people People would anticipate that. And I'm gonna just try to ink a spot that we didn't sand just so you can see what if you don't sand. Okay. Do I wipe the paper? Always. Why? I don't know. But I, look, if you get in a routine, then you're good with that. Let's just pop those back on for a second and look at that. I mean, really? Wow. So what we get is wherever we sanded, that's raw craft. This ink absorbs right into that craft. So you can see the vintage photo. You can see that darker walnut stain. To me, that's just more interesting by doing different colors. Could you just use one color? Of course you could, you do you. You can do whatever you want with that. But this printed color, it will take some ink, but it cannot absorb ink because it is a printed color. It is not, if you tried to do this, say on regular blue cardstock, that blue cardstock would suck up the ink. That's what's cool about craft stock. It is a printed color paper. So it, it does tint it. I mean, you can see this is where it started and this is the color that it went on. But you can also do just some fun, great things even with water. So we're gonna take some water and we're gonna just add some drips over this just so you can see how this reacts with water. I always like to, to take my heat tool to a couple water drips just for a couple seconds. It gives them a, a nice little outline. And then we'll take a paper towel, go right up at the top just to almost absorb that water right off the surface. 
and then we'll dry the rest of the way. So let me just take all these drips off just so you can see um, what water still does to the finish. Because I think if you understand what makes craft stock so cool, you, you might understand it a little bit more, really. So here's what makes it so cool. Look over here. Do you see that when the water hits this inked paper, it takes the ink off and goes back to that printed color? So it's really beautiful that all those little water drops will still lift up the color because we're inking a coated paper, so to speak, but it is coated with ink. So it's just beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. And, and that's what's nice about the sanding disc is that it allows us just to kind of burnish enough of it, but leave enough color where it matters. Mm, 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 so good. So let's talk about sanding metallic because you can, in fact, sand metallic. Now, these I, I didn't do. I, I wanted to leave them shiny metallic. But let's say you wanted your metallic to be a little bit more uh, on the grungy side. And I'll show you what I mean before I do it so you can understand where we're going and uh, what's going to happen when we get there. So if you look at this one, can you see these, these dots here? They're metallic. These dots here are white because they're, well, a little light because they're uh, going through layers of the gold into silver. And these are dark brown. Why? These are the ones that got sanded completely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sand off enough metallic to reveal the craft core that's going to allow me to ink it brown. So let me go back to all of our pieces. Even though you're kind of in, in the zone, you'll only sand on your medium mat once and then you'll have a, a chill will go over your body of like, oh, please, no, please, no, please, no. Okay, sanding. So this one is already done, painted, everything. The reason I do it after I paint is because I don't want the paint to go into here either. So let's talk about this metallic ink, if you will. See, it starts out, it kind of gets down to a weird silvery uh, white. Let me wipe off some of that dust. See that? Beautiful. That's going to be fine. That should take, that's going to take the ink no problem. Uh, so uh, it, it's also just a great finish. You know, maybe you wanted to create something like at Christmas and you didn't, because it has to have a white base, so they, they flood the craft paper with white, and then they print the metallic over the top of it. So if you just stop on that first layer, you get this beautiful white, and to me, that's great. You could just be done with that. Be like, ah, that's really cool. But this is going to be inkable. So we'll go back to our ink pads. We'll take our blending tool for the inks, and we're gonna ink over that. And that's just gonna absorb the color just like the other one did. But our paint, the distress paint is permanent. It is waterproof. So we don't have to worry about uh, anything happening to that. It's gonna stay, whatever, it doesn't matter what color we, we put on there. And then I'm just gonna burnish this off. Again, dry paper towel, I'm just taking off any of that excess ink because the ink is only gonna stick to the sanded part. Remember, that's why we use paint because ink doesn't really wanna stay on metallic. But this is what it did. I don't know if you can see it. You see just how like skipped and worn it is compared to how, see how perfect it is on this side and how worn and choppy and you get that, those darker tones in there. It's just a cool effect. To me, both are beautiful. They're equally beautiful. It just depends on what stage you want to take that sanding to. It's really beautiful. And I thought it was important, especially during Sizzix, just to show, you know, just because a, a tool isn't from one brand doesn't mean it wasn't designed to work with all the brands. And that's honestly what that was with the sanding. I wanted it for ideology papers. There's one brand. Work with Distress Ink and Paints, another brand. Uh, work with uh, Sizzix, another brand. Could it work with stamps? I don't know. We could probably figure that out with some, with some stenciling. But I just think it's a great effect, whether you just leave it as the paper, whether you do the paper and some ink, whether you just do some paint or you do some painting and inking. Beautiful, right? Love that. So that's really what the sanding disc does. It sands, but it's a, a very cool way to sand. My advice, um, depending on what you're sanding, if you get a lot of gunk in your, in your sanding, just tap it on your hand. I'm very tactile and I don't even like microfiber cloths, but if you just tap it, don't sand your hand. The, just your skin will take off all of that gunk that's in the sandpaper. Right? If, you try to, if you try to wipe it off on a paper towel, that's not going to be good. It's just going to sand it. And if you try to wipe it off on your cotton towel, you're just going to fill it with lint. So a little tap there gets all the debris out, and you just use it till it doesn't work, and then you replace it. That's it. Simple, simple. Okay. So we had dyes. We had paint. We had sanding. Moving on.
You do all right, Mario? You're good. Okay, I'm trying. I'm really trying. I'm trying to make it entertaining, educational. I'm not trying to make it entertaining, but I know you say <laughs> that I just do that. So you are I'll just, good. if I say that I mean it, then it actually sounds like there's, there's some intent. Okay, I'm gonna start by inking some backgrounds real quick. We're gonna move on to the mosaic folder and I'll talk about how we created that really cool background for uh, the mosaic. I don't know where my, you? just right, it's right here. No, no, I'm good. Okay. I'm good. Okay, here we go. We're gonna talk about this and how we created this effect that we can just do out of, out of plain paper. So I like to start by doing an, an inky background first. So I have a piece, oh, I don't really wanna use that one. Oh, I know I cut, there we go. I was like, we just cut it on camera. I'm gonna use watercolor paper for this. Why? Because I want some ink uh, and I want this to kind of move around. So I'm gonna use Distress Watercolor cardstock as my background. I prefer to ink my background first. So you can use ink pads, you can use sprays, you can use whatever you want to use. For this kind of stony look, I'm going to use a couple of stains. This is uh, hickory smoke and pumice stone. I'll also use a couple of oxides, ice spruce and bundled sage, because one's gonna give me translucency, one's gonna give me a little milky opacity, kind of like a stone. But again, you can do your ink pads by smushing them over here and just doing a print with it. In fact, I might even do a little bit of brown just to show that technique. But first things first, let's do our paper. I'm working in a splat box because I don't want spray everywhere. I'm just working on a paper towel just so I have a little bit of something. Because I want my background to be all over inky, I'm going to wet my paper first. Just a couple of sprays. If you watch any ink demos, uh, then you know that the benefit of having a little bit of wet paper first is uh, it, it hides kind of the ink splotch, if you will, okay? So a little pumice stone, little hickory smoke to start. We can add a, a couple little bits of water just to get that color moving. And then I'm gonna take just a little bit of ice spruce. I'm not, sorry, not ice spruce. Yes, ice spruce. I'm looking, I'm looking, what was I just reading? I was <laughs> reading Mel's comment. Oh, the truck and inspiration. Oh, thanks. See, I was reading hashtags and then I thought I even called the color hashtag. I'm gonna use some ice spruce and just do uh, just a little little spritz of it, not much. Now we'll dry it. We're gonna do layers, it's all about layers. Okay, there you go. Ted's all about his product, he's, he's not shy. Yes, this is the splat box, it is magical. So here we've got a blend, but here's what I'm gonna do also. As this is drying, if you need to blend any color out, you can go in and do some little splatters. We do love this box. This box has been, gosh, this is, I don't even know how many years on this same box. If you just use it a lot, it's, it's amazing. Uh, yeah, pumice stone isn't purpley. What it is, is you're seeing the oxidation happening right now of ice spruce. Pumice stone is actually pretty green. It's pretty greenish, greenish gray color. This is the oxide happening from that little ice spruce. And that's why I like to add it because it creates a, a very cool, See that cool finish that it creates? Really neat, okay? That's a good start, but we're, we're not done yet. Next, what I, I wanna do is we're gonna add a little bit of bundled sage because I kinda want something a little bit mossy. We're gonna take that. Now, you can spray it. You can also just open this up and take out the little schnozzle and you can just do a couple of splats or drips. We don't want too much of this particular one because again, I'm going for like a mossy effect. I don't want my stones to be green, but I want some green to kind of show up. So if you just use the schnozzle and kind of just flick that on there, see those green drips? That's gonna work for this particular color. See that? Okay, let's dry that, because we want that to be kind of go right in there. Just drying. The whole thing to remember about inky backgrounds. Wet on wet is going to blend wet on dry is going to layer. So when I put all three of these colors down initially, that's what gave me this cool blend because they were wet on wet. This little bit of bundled sage over the top was wet on dry. Wet on dry, what is that gonna do? It's going to layer. So that means by applying it that way, my drips stay my drips. Doesn't mean they'll stay drips forever, especially if I put another layer on, but my point is they're not gonna be as fluid as everything else. So. Last thing we wanna do is we're just gonna add a little bit of 
brown to it. So I'm going to just take some walnut stain. Could I do this with a spray? Yes. But I, again, I like to play fair with all the products to show if you don't have sprays, you can still do this with an ink pad. Squish it down, meaning you actually have to press your ink pad down. Here you can see the dismount. If I just drag my ink pad, I don't get any ink. But if I press, I'm getting ink out of it. You have to remember if you're ever applying ink to a surface, you got to press down. Then we're going to spray it with water till we create droplets. Then we want to break up those droplets. Just using my fingers, if you wipe your fingers off immediately, no ink. Look, no ink. Just do it immediately. I want those drops because if I don't create the drops and I just put the paper in that ink, it's going to be giant bruise, not what we're going for. Next, I'm just going to take this and I'm going to press it down, kind of like splash in the puddles. That's what's going to give me those great drips and drops. We're done with the splat box because we're done spraying and we'll dry. Easy, right? Now, because we have ink and water, some of it's going to be fluid, some's going to be drippy. I'm just going to dry it and off we go. I think it's important to remember you don't overthink the ink. Sometimes people get so intimidated by the ink or you're just in a rush. You want it to be done before you even started. And that's not a good mindset of a maker. Really, if, if that's your mindset, you should just do something else for that moment. You know, maybe die cut or maybe just cut pieces of paper because inking, you should just let it happen. Just be in it, add stuff, dry stuff. If you want to remove stuff, you know, you can lift some off this stuff that's right here. We can go back. We can go in for another dip. I know this is just a background, but the more interest that it's going to have and just by and notice, I'm always holding the paper. I'm never laying the paper flat because then it's going to squish everything out. I want to have those uh, random organic movements. So I'm just looking for areas. I'm like, okay, that needs a little bit of drip and we'll dry it. Great. We have a perfect, perfect background. What about the white space? What about it? nothing, nothing, nothing. We can cover that up if we want, or we can embrace the space. Either one. Okay. So with this, I just want to dry it and I want to make sure that the ink is dry. A couple of tips. Uh, if you have a, a heat tool, which I recommend everyone has, if you're inking, you want to be about an inch away from your surface. You don't want to be on it where it's touching it, but you don't want to be up here. This is not going to do any good. This tool is designed to go right over the surface. Um, it diffuses heat, so it's not going to blow your ink around. So your, your work won't look like spin art. Very, very important. Okay. Now let's say you're one of those people that just cannot embrace the space. That's going to drive you crazy. Here's my tip to you. My tip is not try to spray anything over that area. My tip is to take something and just use your finger and just fill in the blanks that way, right? Whether even that, even if it's toning it down or if you, if you felt the need that you need to get, you know, a little bit more ink because you ran out. But if you go in and start trying to spray that one area, it will be obvious. It will be, it will be so obvious. See, just a little bit. Again, if you wipe it off while it's wet, your fingers stay clean. So that's just going to kind of bring it in a little bit. See, just tones it down, but it doesn't look like, you know, buckshot bill over there. Cause there's so many people are like, ch -ch 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 -ch. you're trying to cover that up. And before you know it, you put all the product right there and it just looks like a, a shootout. So we don't want that. So next we're going to clean this up again, a tip. If you have a media mat, you start on the craft mat with your towel, towel, binky, whatever, dismount off of that. Never start from the glass because you'll only push the ink up against the edge and that will cause this to roll and lift. So whenever you're cleaning this, it's always clean on the mat only, never from the glass to the mat. It'll just make it last longer, look nice longer. So here's our background, cool, grungy, whatever. We're gonna emboss it. Yes, we are. We're gonna take an embossing folder we're going to take the new mosaic. Okay. Very cool. Great folder. Look at all that texture in real life. Whoa. All right. So let's get our fold away again. Let's see how it cooperates. We'll see, you know, you never know how it's going to behave over here, but I'll, I'll be all right. Now, even though I did an inked background, remember we talked about, do you always spray your backgrounds? Yes. No. How often when you do, if I have an inked background that I'm going to emboss and I like what's happening, I will spray the back of it because if I spray the ink, that's okay, but it's going to start getting this to move and it could uh, take some color off into my folder. So when I work on an inked background, I spray the water back here. So instead of like one on each side, I do two on the back. 
So, but I'm going to do off camera this time so I don't have to work in a puddle. Right? Take it easy, Buckshot Bill. Well, you know. <laughs> what? I said, take it easy, Buckshot Bill. Who's Buckshot Bill? <laughs> That's what you said. Oh, boy. See? The characters in my mind are making their way out. Okay. I've placed that in because we've already cut that paper perfectly because, well, you know how now. We're going to place that down. We've got our platform, one cutting pad at an angle, placing this down, uh, getting this through your fold away, getting that to engage. Put your hand up here, roll that through one time, and that's what we have. What? Shut up. See? Look at all, see all those little drips? See that little bundled sage? See that little speckly fleckly from walnut stain? See more of that bundled sage? So when you wonder, why is he doing a drip? That's just weird. Because it matters. You can achieve that otherwise. But now it looks like, whoa, that perfect cobbly stone background thing. That's the, that's the whole idea by really playing with inky textures and applying it in different ways to create an effect. Now, you could be done with this. If you liked this look, then you could be done. It's a, it's a wonderful soft look. I'm gonna bring out the colors a little more and I'm gonna give it more of uh, that tiled look, that glazed tile, because see the difference? This one, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna do this next to this, um, but I do love it. Beautiful, isn't it? Fun. You don't, it, and it's just about playing. And I think that's the other reason why I like live so much. I do believe that sometimes you know, I'm not going to say people aren't truthful. That's not my implication. I'm just saying that sometimes, you know, if it takes a while, you need to be aware how long it takes. Because sometimes you're like, oh, it's easy. Make a quick ink background. And then you're like, well, define quick because I did an ink background. It took me an hour. And maybe it took that person an hour. So I always think real time is good. There's always a risk to it. You never know what you're going to get when you do real time demos. But that's just me. And you guys embrace it. So I appreciate that. Okay. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to go back to the splat box. Now we have a dry background. And what I'm going to use to create this effect, this wonderful finish, is Resist Spray. Now Resist Spray is a great product. It's very temperamental. You have to get along with it. Sometimes you have to walk away from one another. But it is a wonderful sprayable gloss. So think of it as like a, a sprayable liquid glossy accents. Because that's really what it is. It, it dries with that shiny finish. But it is fluid but it, it is pretty sticky stuff. So when I work with it, I spray it, and when I'm done, I take the nozzle out, I run it under hot water and spray water through it until the nozzle is totally clean, and I put it back in. If you don't, you're gonna have to get new sprayers. And Ranger sells replacement sprayers, so it's good to have it, but that's the only downside to this stuff is that you just have to clean the nozzle. But if you're good about it, like I said, you have that relationship, you're gonna be fine. I love this because you can spray it through a stencil and it creates a resist for future layers of ink, but it also does make the coolest finish. Because of its uh, consistency, while it's wet, it's also sticky. So you could spray it down and you could say, cover something with glitter, like rock candy glitter, and it will, it will stick. The glitter will stick to that once this resist spray dries. So it's also a nice, like thin glue, if you will, if you wanted to say, spray something through a stencil cover it with embossing powder and then heat it, it's going to stick whereas embossing ink is sometimes glycerin. You just have to remember that. So it could be a sprayable sticky, but it's really a, a resist because now that it's shiny, it's gonna act as a resist. And we need that resist for these dark brown lines that are gonna happen. So let's start with that. You want a splat box because wherever this goes, it stays. If you spray it on the glass and you don't take it off, the only way to get resist spray off the glass is with a razor blade because it, it sticks. So get a get one of those. So I'm just going to start just making sure I've got it going because it's obviously a first spray because it's always a clean nozzle. I know that. And I'm going to spray this on. Now this kind of goes out kind of weird purpley. Uh, the reason is, is when we were designing it, I did ask for a slight tint in the liquid because I wanted to see where it was. If it's truly clear, I wouldn't know where it was heavy, where it was light, uh, but it will dry clear. So see how like I just focused that so you could see blah. Okay, where, how it goes, but don't worry, it will dry clear. That's totally part of it. You don't need that much. I was just trying to make a point. Now I would take this off, run it underwater, spray, 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 and that's what I will ask Mario to do. <laughs> but, but honestly, just wiping the top off is not enough, I found. Sometimes it works depending on your climate, but not here in Arizona. So Prince, yeah, if you can yeah, undo yeah, that. Thank you very much. Okay, so a couple things to know about this spray. 
Uh, one, it's going to make all of your colors come to life. All of it, all of it. Um, if you if you try to seal this with a brush, so let's say you're like, well, okay, I'm just going to use collage medium. Okay, but when you're brushing collage medium on, you're going to move all this ink around. Why? These inks are water reactive. So when collage medium hits it, it's wet. And when you drag it across, it pulls, correct? So if you keep going back and forth with collage medium or gel medium, you are essentially moving that ink pattern around. The resist spray, as soon as it hits it, it seals it, but it also brings out the colors. Look at how neon bundled sage is now. So if you're kind of like, well, it's a little subtle. I know that this resist spray always makes the colors really vibrant, really come to life. So choose subtle first because subtle will be, you know, pretty, pretty amazing. Um, there we go. Okay. Next, we're going to dry it. Now you have some options. If you let it air dry, it's going to air dry. If you use a heat tool, you can use a heat tool. If you use a heat tool, it will create a slight crackle effect. Um, not like crackle paint, but it does create like little wrinkles and I kind of like it, but you don't have to heat it. I want to be very clear about that. This is not embossing powder. Um, the heat is not setting it. It's literally speeding up the drying time. So you can let it air dry or you can use a heat tool, but a heat tool will create like a little bit of texture. Nice. And I'm letting the heat pass through it. So again, you see that I've got my paper up at an angle because if you don't, you're going to trap a lot of moisture under the glass. I'll show you what I mean. You'll see if you can see it for a second. Oh, no, you can't. Okay. But you, you will get moisture that traps under the glass and it takes your paper twice as long to dry because you're essentially trying to dry it from the top, but there's all this moisture under here. So next we have a beautiful finish. Look at that shine. Whoop, whoop. Beautiful, beautiful. So now we've got like glazed tiles. So at this point, this paper went from a matte finish, which is what it was, to a shine, a nice shine, but the shine also seals the paper. So now that it's sealed, it allows me to play with other mediums. So we're going to go in with distressed crayons. The distressed crayons is now going to take it from inked and shiny to all this cool color in the recessed areas. Why do I like crayons? They're opaque, they're wonderful, they're magical, and they're just good. I like to use different colors and I like to use my dedicated grunge brush. So I have dedicated blending brushes for many things, for inks and all that, but I do have a grunge brush. I have just this, this one blending brush that I love to get a crayon into things and it just, it really works for me. So I've got a couple colors. I've got forest moss, peeled paint, a little walnut stain. I don't know, just do whatever. Do whatever you want. Uh, carefully apply it. Pay close attention to where you are putting it. I'm kidding. Just put the color wherever you want. Um, just keep in mind that you're going to need to move it around in a minute. So, and I don't put the caps on the crayons till I'm done because I'll have to go back and probably add some colors. Now, distressed crayons are a water reactive pigment, meaning right now when I apply them, I can smudge them out with my finger. See how I can make that kind of brown but I want to move them a little bit more. So if I take a little bit of water, I don't want to spray this. I actually want to just put a little water on the mat. I can take this brush and just with a damp brush, I don't want it to be super wet. I can now move that crayon around. This is just, it's just going to start building up some grunge layers, dipping in with a little bit of water. Water just helps the crayon move. If you don't want to use a brush, dip your finger in water and do the same thing. It's just going to make the crayon a little bit more movable and by doing it this way, it's going to start building up color, you'll see in a second, around those stones. Can you see it already? It's starting to build up the color. So you can control how much you want to add. You can always go back and add more where you want to build up color. But that little bit of moisture is certainly going to help. And the paper is quite resilient, depending on the paper. That's why I worked with watercolor paper. Um, if you were to try this on, say, something really thin, the pressure of this particular technique might remove some of the texture from uh, the embossing folder, but hey, you know, you don't know until you, until you try. Practice. Okay. But I, I prefer the brush because the brush is just going to let me like pounce and, I mean, you could see I'm really, really allows me to work that color a little different. A little grime, a little grunge. Don't freak your freak. We're far from done, even though you, you see it and it, it looks like a hot mess. It is right now in this stage. But all I'm trying to do is take that, the browns and the greens and 
you kind of get what you get and work it into the, the grout or the, the space or the gap of these tiles. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. I can, I can see an outline and you can build up as much as you want, as much as you like. So the final finish then is now bringing our color back because at this point I've smeared that crayon everywhere. You can see there's some green, a little bit more brown. That's why I like playing with different colors. The ends of the crayons match the cap, so it's very easy to match up where it's got to go. Perfect. And next we're going to take a paper towel. We're going to put some water on there. And we're going to just wipe this off. And once you do, you're going to see the reveal. That's where your tiles really really come out and same thing just like before i'm going to work with clean different parts of a paper towel and just start taking that crayon away you have to t the same way we added layers you have to take it off in layers so see i'm i'm working from a, a paper towel but i have to create a clean area each time just to reveal more of the crayon and you you can take off as much or as little as you want and you can always go back and add more as well but this is our now finished background. Isn't that cool? Like that just looks like mossy, grungy, grubbly stone. Mm -mm -mm. So cool. Beautiful. I love the effect. And it's very easy. Um, again, this is one of those things I talk about compartmental making all the time. There's days that I'll just sit and do backgrounds. That's why I have a whole, a whole stack of them. You know, get out your folders, get out your paper, and just start making textured backgrounds so you have them. You, this way, if I'm gonna do a card, I don't have to do leather, I have one. I don't have to do cobblestone, I have one. Or, you know, some industrial plates, maybe a, a patinaed one or a metal one. This one, that number block, this is the one that Anita used. I love that, I also love it on wood grain. So, instead of using metallic cardstock, use distressed wood grain, same resist spray, now you know what the shine is. But I love that. This one is inking the folder with black archival. And then when you deboss it, it puts black in there and leaves these that bright wood grain. But there's a, a lot of fun. This is doily. Remember doily? We still have that. Great for Valentine's Day. Ink the folder with oxide. Emboss the white watercolor cardstock. And then it, pr it prints the color and leaves that. That's a, that's a perfect folder for that. So this is the whole compartmental making is just sit down and do something instead of convincing yourself that you can't do anything. It's, it, it's not true. You can. You may not feel motivated to make something start to finish, but sitting there, yeah, doily, this one is like, this is, that's a bomb diggity. Look at that. Look at it just, I mean, the texture of every one of those stitches is mind blowing. Wow. And you have to whisper when you say that because it makes it more impactful. Okay. Doily. Mind blowing. All right. Doily. Yeah, doily. Yeah, you, there's so many things, like even in presslets, super fun with those. Okay, let's, uh, I think I got one more demo. Well, I have 10 more, but I'll, I'm just going to do one more and then wrap it up. I, do I dare look? That, that can't be the time. Yes, it is. Almost it's, two. So we've been going on for Almost four hours? Four, uh, ten, in 10 minutes, you've been four hours. Listen, we start off with a bang around <laughs> here. <laughs> I was, I was going to end it, but you know what? I'm not. I might go in and break a record. Hey, I'm... It's been a long time. I missed you guys. I need to, I gotta show you. Okay, here's, here's what I wanted to share with you. And this one, this is not a long demo, but it's one of those things that I waited to see um, how the makers did stuff because you know, there are some techniques that makers did that I was gonna do and I didn't wanna, I didn't wanna do anything if they did. And they didn't, so I'm gonna show you. Did you know, let me just clean, I just wanna clean this up because I'm not using much ink for this. I'm just going to clean my hands real quick because that's what I like to do. Because crayon comes off of your fingers super easy just with water. You can keep your fingers, your hands very clean if you just clean them in between. Okay, here we go. Did you know that this was the stamp set that um, inspired the die set? Right When I talked about Distinguished, that's the stamp set that inspired the die set for Tailored. It's a very, very cool, cool die set. But back in the day, for a very brief time, there was a framelit set that was released to match this stamp set. And it was only here for like a split second. It was gone, like here and gone. Um, and it, it mentioned that it, it works with this stamp set and it came and went very quickly. Now, these were only framelits that so a framelit, if you're not familiar with what a framelit is in, in the physics world between a framelit and a thinlet, 
A framelit is a die that frames a design. It's just an outline. Um, a thinlet is a die that has stuff going on in and out of it. Let me grab this. Okay. So this kind of die, so you can see this is not a framelit because it's got all the different pieces. So it doesn't frame a design. You can't see through this die and that is why it's a thinlet. Now sometimes a die of thinlets will have a framelit, meaning it's, it's, it's one die that's an outline, but it's not really considered a framelit. So just so you understand the difference in the terminology, a framelit was designed to cut out these stamps. It was here and gone, and many people were incredibly upset, okay? But that's just not how that works. Um, sometimes things come and go. So when we were designing this, this tailored, I said to Lisa, do you think when you're designing this, and I know we have to follow so many different types of specs to create all the things I wanted to, that you could get this die to be exactly the same scale as this stamp set. So it's a thinlet, but you could use it as a framelit. And she did. And so I'm gonna tell you this because you may not care and you may never do it, but if you own these stamps and you don't have that framelit set, and that's been on your wish list or your I'm not paying $300 on eBay list, I'm gonna show you how you can do it with this new set with tailored because you can and it's going to be a technique that i've shared before it's just about you seeing it a little different okay so i'm going to take my stamps and what i was able to achieve is all of these pieces you can actually stamp them all of them from the hat to the rim to the layers of the bow tie to all the collar pieces you can do that for any of these pieces uh, that fit but it's not, it's not a framelit. So then it comes the question of, well, because I'm sure there's even Sizzix people rolling their eyes going, oh boy, the phones are going to ring because he's just said you can cut it with the stamp set and they're going to want that. And so it wasn't designed that way. It was just one of those, if you watch the live, now you know the secret, okay? So this is where, yeah, it, Lisa, you rocked it. She just did it because she started with this art. That's what she did. So she started with this art and then designed the die around that scale and was able to match it up. But if you look at this and you look at the dies for any of those pieces, you're like, okay, well, if that is this, how, I don't even get it. How am I going to see through, what am I pushing the paper onto the stamp? Oh, well, you could try that. That's probably not going to be the easiest way to do it, but you could try it. Okay. So look, all those dies want to stick to the magnet. So here's my trick for that. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to take your favorite dies from the set and you're going to cut it out. Now, keep in mind that there are not dies for everything on this stamp set. There is not an umbrella. There is not a pocket watch. There's not every, there's not this text. There's not a hanger. But this stuff right here, the stuff that's on this die can be used with the stamp. So you start by cutting out your pieces from watercolor cardstock or a thicker weight cardstock. That's really important. And you're gonna pop out those pieces. Once you do, you're going to save these as your templates. This is no different than what I shared during the holidays on those labels. If you guys remember the labels, same thing. It's just approaching it a little different. So what we're going to do is using a stamping tool, I'm gonna to take my, my stamp platform, I'm gonna take my template that I have for this and I'm gonna place it midway do not be tempted to start at the top. The top is gonna to give you too much of a pressure and it's gonna shift your images off. So place it down. I have some media grip so I can go along the edge. Depending on the magnet you have, you might still have the tonic magnets or like me, you might've exploded them all in your fingers. So I just use bar magnets. I got these at uh, Simon Says. I have a little bit of tape around it. All we care about at this point are these big pieces, the main shape. And let's, let's just talk through it. So these are the pieces that came out of watercolor paper. Once I have one template, I'll just take a die and I'll cut all my pieces and I only save one template. It's so all you need to remember is just the one template. So let's say I want to start stamping the jacket piece, this piece or the hat. We're gonna do all of them same time. The ink that I wanna stamp with, well, whatever ink you wanna stamp, I like to stamp with archival. So taking my die cut piece, these are going to be the pieces that coordinate with the stamps. So what I need to do is take the stamp. So you'll see there's two different like collar pieces. There's a wide one and a narrow one. And it's the same thing in, in the die set when you see it. 
there's going to be a wider one and a little narrow one. You can see it's very subtle, but this one's wider and this one's narrower. I like the wide one with the top hat. So I'm going to take this, this wide guy. A rubber stamp is raised. Thank you, Stampers Anonymous, for wonderful raised red rubber stamps. What that's going to allow me to do is take the stamp, put it right into that negative space, and it will fit like a puzzle piece. You'll know when it's locked in right on that media grip. I'm going to take the stamp for the top hat. I'm going to place that into the top hat until it locks into place. And it needs to. You'll, you just kind of use your fingers if it didn't lock in. And the media grip is really helpful for this because it also wants to grip. So same thing with the bow tie. And I'm only doing it on the largest area, not all the little sidebar pieces. Once I have that, I'm going to close it. I'm going to push all three stamps so they're stuck. And I'm going to lift this up. Now I have my cut pieces. I'm going to place that right down into those templates. I'll take my hat, place that down, and I'll take the bow tie and place that down. So now I've pushed in all of the die cut pieces. I put them back in there. Next, I'll take my ink. I will ink up the stamps. So over here, I'm just tappity tap tapping with my archival, making sure that I got ink on the stamps. All right, then I'm going to go in and close this. Press, 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 press. Just press, no CPR, but I want to have, because up here, again, you're going to have too much drag. I just want to push. Then I'm going to open this up. And now I have stamped all of these pieces. So I'm going to take this little picker, quicker, sticker thing, where, whatever you have. Um, it's, it's called, this is called a quick stick, but they're all called different. It's got like a little tack. You can use any kind of tack on it. And I'm going to touch that piece and take a look at that. Shut up. Stamped, right in the middle, stamped, and right in the middle, stamped. And you might be saying to yourself, well, okay, I get that. That's a, that's a framelit. So well done. You were able to do this. But what about these other pieces? What about these wing pieces? Because if you know about this die, to me, what makes this die super special is the ability to layer and fold and create these cool elements to it, right? So I'm going to take these side wing pieces from that same jacket. And these side wing pieces, when they cut, there's actually two of them because this is going to fold back. And I'm going to pop them into that same template. So I'm not even worrying about how it, let me set that down. I just want to pop that into that piece like a puzzle piece. Let me move this one up a little bit. There we go. And they'll sit in there. So even though these crisscross in the middle, they're crisscrossing, they fit into that paper area. I've not touched my stamps. That doesn't change. It changes nothing. For my top hat, the top hat has the top, middle, and the bottom. I'm going to take, so what do you do about this V piece? Well, I'll show you. I don't really like how it stamps, but you can. So I'm going to take the top hat, and it's pretty easy to figure out. The brim of the hat goes on the very bottom, right in that spot. The top piece of the hat sits in that top area. And like I said, you may never want to bother with this ever, but it's pretty fascinating to know that Lisa nailed the scale of it so well. Maybe she doesn't even know she did that, but she did. Um, then I'm going to take the band and I kind of visual it. Like I look here and I'm like, okay, I know that the band is always going to go from the edge of the hat. So as long as I put it there, it's going to be to the nearest ish and that's close enough. Then I can take the bow tie and we're going to stamp all of those pieces of the bow tie. This, this, and yes, even that. So I'll start with, and you can only do one at a time. So you'll find the bow tie part that fits. Good enough. Great. Now we're going to go in, tap, tap, tap. So our stamps never moved. We're working in the same space by putting in those pieces. Lay it down, press, press, press. Stamp, stamp, stamp with purpose, lift it up. And now we have those pieces stamped again. Now we have both sides of our coat stamped in the angle that it needs to be. We have our bow tie stamped where it needs to be. And you have your hat. You have the top piece. You have the middle band with the shading. And you have the bottom part of the hat stamped. Now, because we're out of these pieces, now we just focus on the tie. 
So it's the same thing. We're just going to take that bow tie and it only fits in the puzzle one way. So if you're like, oh, I don't know which way it fits, it's only going to fit one way. And if it doesn't fit into that spot to where you're liking it, just kind of wing it. So this is going to be like the middle part of the, I'll just say the middle part of the tie. So here I can just set it right in the middle part of that piece of paper. Here we go. Here, let me get this up a little bit. This almost looks like a bigger tie. I did drop this cup on the floor, but I'm not. Remember that, Mario? That was fun. That was like two minutes before live. This entire demo went on the ground. Why? No, I don't know. I'll see. This, this could work. This might be a different from a different set. Anyway, I dropped all the cups. Oh, no, that worked great. Um, two minutes before live, and I'm like, we're good with it. There we go. So we have that stamp tie. And now what about this guy? Well, some people would probably say, ah, forget it. I'm not going to. I'm going to set that right where I think it should go. The media grip is going to kind of help. <laughs> and I'm going to put a little bit of ink on that tie. And we'll go in that same area. Because as long as it gets something, see, like this one, see where it is? It's stuck right there. As long as we have a little something, look, I'll just take that little nugget out. It's still going to be a cool stamped piece that's going to look like this element. So once you're done with this, you could just keep going. Like you could do all of your stamp pieces, but when you're done, it's very simple. You can take off your stamps and put them away. You would keep your template because your template is still your template. All you have to do next time is just kind of reset your stamped images, but this template is still perfectly good to use. You don't have to get rid of it. Even if you kind of off stamp a little bit, it's really close. And then for this, you're just going to clean the media grip with a little bit of water because obviously there's times that we stamped where we didn't have pieces in and just a little bit of water in a cloth cleans the archival off of your media grip and you are good to go. And now you have all of these great pieces of this die set. And if you own the stamp set, you can actually stamp them. Now, do you have to? No, you, you don't have to stamp them, but there is something very cool about that look. And this was just sharing uh, with the people of like, well, wait a minute, you know, I never got the stamp sets and I have it. Well, this is a great solution. So was it designed to be used with the stamps? No, it's not a framelit. But can you use this in with stamps? Yes. It's just a little workaround to do it. And it's really, I think, uh, quite fun and quite cool. And I didn't bother to do a straw hat. So let's talk about the V pieces. The V pieces are just kind of weird. So yes, you can get it. You get some imagery. I don't know if it's really worth it, but you can. So you can just kind of lay that V piece in where you think it goes in the collar and get some imagery. You might like that. But I wanted to share that tip because um, I do think it's cool. I know not everybody wants to go to the nth degree with their product, but I think as makers, it is important. It's an investment. What you're buying, what you're spending your money on, it's a lot. It's, it's a lot. And I think having, having stuff that you can utilize with it is, is always the best.